Hey what's up guys, it's your boy KCM What Ifs. Today we are gonna be reading the Sharingan Devil or what if Naruto had the Sharingan and was a captain of the Umbu. So sit back relax and enjoy. Kurinai bit her lip nervously, currently standing at the doorstep of the Kaiser's quarters she felt great sympathy for the man sleeping in the bed. There were neat piles of checked reports lying on a nearby desk, an empty bottle of whiskey, an ashtray which was completely full. And judging from the dark lines beneath Naruto's eyes, and how carelessly he sprawled across the bed was a clear indicator as to what had happened. Looking towards Kadamaru, who was standing guard outside the door, she only received a disappointed look. If he keeps working like this, he'll use up his entire life in just a few years. Said Karinai worriedly, I don't know for sure, but I think the Kaiser holds himself guilty for not being able to help us for a while. He's a person who always leads from the front, he never asks his subjects to do anything which he himself would never do. It's the reason why the people love him so much, but at this rate. Said Kadamura hesitantly, how long was he working, asked Karinai, already knowing the answer the royal guard was going to give. All night. Kurinai-sama, is it really necessary for you to wake him up right now? He needs rest. Suggested the soldier, I understand. But I'm simply following the order the Kaiser himself gave me. The Kaiserin is in the hospital with Tsunade by her side, and Kakashi is busy with his own work, Sasuke is working with the army. That only leaves me and Naruto to represent the Reich in the negotiations with the rebels. I don't like this either, but I'll only increase his guilt if I don't remind him of the negotiations which start in just one hour from now." Explained Kurinai regretfully, Kadamaru closed his eyes in defeat and gave a slight bow. Getting out of the way, he allowed her to enter the quarters and closed the door behind her. Walking forward she came beside Naruto and sat inches away from him. She could see the fatigue had not left from his still recovering body, it would take a few more days before his body could function at full capacity after months of lying inactive in a hospital bed. Strongest warrior or not, Naruto was in the end still human and bound by the limitations of the human body. Observing closely, she noticed for the first time the minute signs that had previously evaded her. Despite his outward appearances and unending determination, Naruto had steadily lost considerable weight over the years. A few invisible strands of his bright blonde hair had slowly started to turn white, there were the concrete signs of the appearances of lines under his eyes. The occasional cough escaping from his mouth didn't leave any doubts about his internal health. The Reich had now entered the fourth year of its rule. Almost the entire humanity united under one banner, it was a phenomenon never seen except during the reign of the Hashiman. Just this fact was enough to show the accomplishment this nearly twenty-year-old young boy had achieved. For one to get stronger, the other must be weakened. It was one of the most well-known universal laws. The Reich itself developed on the ashes of the dying ninja world. But the same applied to Naruto as well. The more the Reich grew strong, the weaker Naruto became. It was as if this kingdom was sucking every ounce of Naruto's energy, lifetime and will. Kurinai was sure that Naruto knew it, but he never complained and never let even the ones close to him realize that as the years passed, slowly but surely the Kaiser was crumbling. She doubted even Haku had an idea as to how grave the situation was, and the blame lied fairly in the confident way in which Naruto carried himself. Kurinai herself wouldn't have noticed these glaring facts, if she had not seen him in such a state. Unlike the impotent rulers, Kages, daimyos of the past era, Naruto was hell-bent on giving his people a bright future. And for that he was sacrificing every bit of his own life. Her finger automatically caressed his gentle face, running through his smooth hair. He sighed contently, clearly welcoming the affectionate gesture. She didn't know what or rather whom he was dreaming about right now, but she wanted to believe that he needed her just as much as he needed his wife. Since his pillow had been tossed aside in his twisting during sleep, she gently lifted his head and placed it in her lap. Running her fingers through his hair, she laid a soft kiss on his forehead even as a silent tear escaped from her eyes. 
I'm so sorry, Naruto. Said Karinai sadly, nearly on the brink of tears. Before the Reich, Haku, Operation Ghost, Team 7 it had been just the two of them. If there was one thing which had remained constant in her life was the unending love she had for the man sleeping in her lap. She could care less if he was the Kaiser or not, or if the ninja world burned to the ground. As the years passed, she slowly realized what was the most important thing in life. From the very beginning of their lives, ninjas are made to believe that living and dying for their villages is the greatest honor any warrior could achieve. Above friends, family, above values, about humanity itself lied the oath every ninja made. Even if their nations were oppressors, their leaders corrupt, murderers, or mongering fools, revenge-seeking idiots, it didn't grant a shinobi the right to stage a revolt. For they had taken an oath. And then there are rebels like Naruto, brave hearts who fight against the unjust system. Trying to change the world so that others don't suffer the misery which they had to go through, completely in violation to the oath taken as a ninja, people like him fight for friends, family, and humanity. They don't mind being called traitors as long as they get to fight for that one thing which keeps them human. You've been fighting against the entire world, carrying the entire burden of saving humanity on your young shoulders. And I, said Karinai hesitantly, if only she had not been blinded by patriotism, if only she could have looked beyond her oath to see how fucked up their world was. But then things wouldn't have turned out the way they had now. Both of us have lost the things most important to us. Karinai was terrified when he said those words. Looking down she saw that he was now awake and was looking at her sympathetically. The look in his eyes was the same one which she had right now. Realizing the position they were in, she quickly tried to move but he stopped her with his firm grip on her hand. Nervous, she looked away only to hear him render comforting words. Don't be afraid, Karinai. Said Naruto patiently, how do you deal with it all? The loss? The pain? I feel my heart crushing around my chest, this agony is unbearable. Replied Karinai miserably. His own eyes became moist on seeing her in so much pain. Why could life never be simple and easy? Why did they have to turn out this way? It really hurts when the person you love is lost or worse when they are with someone else. Both of us made choices, which while saved the people around us, but left us incomplete. You don't have to completely blame yourself, I should have tried hard. I should have pushed you more until you saw reason, don't ever think that a single day passes in my life when I don't curse myself. I fought fiercely for everything else, but when it came to the most important part of my life I didn't try hard enough. You were so blinded by your patriotism towards the village, while I was blinded with my desire to protect your right to make choices, even if it meant the wrong ones. We both are equally responsible. Confessed Naruto, for the first time in years, Kurinai wept openly for losing the only man she had ever loved. The one whom she still loved, and always will till the end. And he was right beside her, with his strong arms wrapped around her fragile self, each of them taking comfort from the other and sharing the pain which only they could understand. Life is not a fairy tale or a dream movie, things never turn out the way people always want. And nobody in the universe understood this better than Kurinai and Naruto. Whether it was sorrow, joy, happiness or regret, they always had each other. Even while being separated, even when being enemies, even when hating the sheer guts of each other they loved each other. It was in violation of all laws of the universe, both of them were sheer contradictions of each other, and there was only one phenomenon which could describe them. Love. She had her arms wrapped around his neck tightly, sobbing heavily by burying her head in his shoulder. The strong Kaiser himself was crying, unable to control his pain. Love could make even the strongest men vulnerable, and Naruto Uchiha was no exception. He wanted this moment to last, to truly feel alive in her arms. Soon reality would strike and this dream would end, their familiar masks would arrive again. He'll be the strong Kaiser, faithful husband, loving father, fierce warrior, while she'll be a noble leader, strong diplomat and a caring woman. 
I love you, Naruto. No matter what happens, I'll always love you. His heart shattered on hearing those magical words from her again, after all he loved her dearly. Each day without her seemed incomplete, she always opposed him but he loved it. It showed him that there was someone equally stubborn as him, one who wouldn't bow down to him easily. A person who was equally strong in her beliefs. People say that I conquered the world, that I got everything I desired. If only they knew that I lost everything in the process, my parents, my childhood, my youth, my dear Gigi, my best friends, my daughter, and most of all, you. Karina I looked up and saw the things Naruto truly desired. His entire fight had always been for this, family. And then she saw his mask taking charge, trying to shore up his vulnerabilities. Everything he had mentioned was gone from his life, but he still had a responsibility to all those who were still alive. To each person who had supported him, to his wife, to his unborn son. But that didn't mean. Looking her straight in the eye, he came forward and left a soft kiss on her lips. It was just a moment, but it conveyed everything he felt for her. I will always love you, Yuhi Kurinai. Confessed Naruto, she felt happy and sad on hearing those words, and for a moment she saw how difficult this was for him. I love my wife too, Kurinai. If not for her, I would have died long ago. She saved me, filled the emptiness in my heart. And for that I'll forever be grateful to her. In a way she's as much precious to me as you are. And I won't abandon her, regardless of what I feel for you. I will be a good husband, a good father, that's all there is left for me." Explained Naruto seriously, she could clearly see each word he said was equally painful for him, just as listening to them was equally hard for her. I understand. It's just. Said Karinai, getting a nod in return. I know. Karinai got back on her feet and wiped her tears away, he did the same as both of them prepared for the long day ahead of them. The fights came again and again, looking into each other's eyes as they silently conveyed their desire to remain by each other's sides, no matter what. Wordlessly, the Kaiser walked towards the window and saw heavy rains falling from the sky. Stretching his hand outside, he allowed the cold water droplets to hit his skin. You need to be more careful about your health, Naruto. Advised Karinai, making him smile. No need to worry about me. Save your worries for Haku and the people of this Reich, they are the important ones who shall lead this world to its bright future. Replied Naruto, as she took an aggressive step forward. The same can be said of you. Everyone respects and admires you, for them you are the future said Karinai persistently, and saw him strangely looking at the sky. I am just a pillar that supports the dream of peace. That's all I am, Karinai. Confessed Naruto, for a moment he saw the smiling faces of Shin, Sai, Rei, his root comrades, and his parents in the sky. In the past, I hated this world which always kept fighting and crying. I was so sick of it, that I wanted to destroy it. Just goes to show, how naive I was. Said Naruto jokingly, Naruto. But now I want to save it. It's what I want with all my heart. He smiled on seeing the hesitancy in her eyes on hearing his last statement. After all, his final aim was in complete contrast with that statement, one which could destroy the entire world. Rest assured, Karinai. I have finally found a way to complete Valkyrie without killing humanity in the process. Assured Naruto, the shock and surprise on her face was expected. She looked into his eyes in order to search for any doubts, but he never flinched. He simply stared. You did? asked Karinai in surprise. What kind of strongest warrior would I be if I can't find a solution to a problem as grave as that? Chided Naruto, making her blush sheepishly. So, humanity won't be killed? No. For the first time this morning, she smiled. Those little doubts she had were now finally vanishing, but when she tried to look into his eyes again, he turned around and started walking away. I'll get ready. Wait for me outside. 
instructed the Kaiser, Yes, Your Majesty. Karinai obeyed the given order, but she also wondered at the same time as to why Naruto quickly ended the conversation after giving her such good news. Guess, she could add that to another one of his mysteries. Naruto had a neutral expression on his face much to the surprise of Kurinai as the face of Aburaim Shino appeared on the screen. Even the resistance commander seemed shocked to see the Kaiser himself awake and sitting confidently in his chair. The Aburaim couldn't help but flinch when the Kaiser's full gaze landed on him. It's been a while, Aburaim. Said Naruto icily. His tone was not reprimanding but bitter enough to convey his feelings towards this man who was once a dear friend to him. Kaiser Naruto, it's a surprise to see you in good health again. Nonetheless we appreciate you agreeing for these negotiations. Said Shino diplomatically, even Niji could see how nervous his leader was. They had already seen how angry Haku was at them, and the man sitting in front of them right now was the person whom they had almost killed a few months ago. Fortunately, the situation relaxed a bit when Naruto greeted Ayam affectionately, that seemed to ease the Kaiser's negative feelings a bit. But it didn't last when he returned his attention back to Shino. Beside him, Kurinai chose to remain silent and let the Kaiser take the lead. Let's cut the crap, Shino. Why the hell should I even consider giving you asylum along with your people, when months ago you deliberately stabbed me in the back and almost assassinated me? asked Naruto directly, making everyone flinch. There is no defensive argument I can say which can justify what we did. We simply followed the orders of our superiors. As to why you should forgive us, it is for peace. You have to make a decision, Kaiser. The resistance leadership has been informed about our betrayal and they are on their way to murder us all. Confessed Shino, shocking Kurinai. How the hell did they come to know that? Didn't you cut off all communications with them, asked Kurinai irritatedly, and saw the anger in Shino's eyes. We were betrayed by one of our own. A ninja who didn't agree with surrendering to the Kaiser whom he considered a murderer. Admitted Shino, who, asked Naruto, Kanoamaru Saratobi. To everyone's surprise, the Kaiser erupted into a mad fit of laughter. The action appalled the people around him, this was certainly not the kind of response they expected from someone like Naruto. After all, in the past he and that young Saratobi had been quite close. Kaiser Naruto, Kanoamaru hates you from the bottom of his heart. He won't stop until he kills you. Warned Niji, as a cruel smile came on Naruto's face. It's karmic justice that backstabbers like you got betrayed by one of your own in the end. And as far as that boy goes, if he wants to kill me then let him try. If he succeeds then good for him, if he fails then I'll send him to join his extinct clan. He's old enough to make choices, I was the same age as him when I decided to destroy the ninja villages. In the larger scheme of things, he's insignificant to me. Explained Naruto, much to Ayam's horror, do you really mean that, Naruto? Asked Ayam worriedly, yes. I didn't become the Kaiser by just being soft-hearted, but I do understand the devastating impact it will have on the resistance if you guys surrender with millions of civilians fleeing, taking with them a large chunk of supplies and precious manpower. But I want three things in return from you," said Naruto flatly, raising the numbered fingers. Kurinai saw the resigned look in Shino's eyes, and judging from the cunning look Naruto was giving left no doubt in her heart as to what the Kaiser wanted to do. Naruto could be really ruthless when he was forced to be, and the resistance only had themselves to blame for this debacle. Name your terms. Said Shino. First, I want every civilian to surrender to my rule. I will cast my Jinjutsu on them to make them loyal to this Reich and to me. Second, I want critical information about every resistance base, battle plans, troop strength, secret weapons, weakness. Apart from that, I want the entire Black Lancers force to swear their loyalty to me, just as your civilians. Third, and most of all, I want your head Aburaim Shino. Explained Naruto cruelly, pin drop silence prevailed in the room, as each and every member from both parties could only stare in horror. To their extreme surprise, 
neither Naruto or Shino seemed too much affected by their reactions. It was as if they knew this was going to happen. Conditions accepted. But only if you fulfill one condition of mine, you can even consider it as a last wish of a dying man. Said Shino tiredly, Shino, protested Niji and Ayam, and were about to get up from their chairs only to be stopped by their calm leader. Naruto didn't show it, but he was rather surprised with the easy acceptance he received from his former friend. While it was true that logic had always been the decisive factor by which Shino lived his life, this action was performed as if. So you knew whomever you sided with, your death would be certain. You may have not always made the right choices, but I can see that you truly care about your people. I cannot forgive you for what you did to me, but I can at least agree to your last wish. Thought Naruto briefly, very well, commander. Answered Naruto, showing respect to his enemy for the first time. A resigned smile came on Shino's face, and for a moment he looked towards a still shocked Kurinai. Then without blinking he looked the Kaiser straight in the eye. Mary Kurinai Yuhi. Time seemed to have stopped for the young Kaiser, his stoic expression had vanished on hearing that condition. His fists clenched tightly drawing blood, his eyes glared daggers at the silent Aburame who only gave him a neutral look. So, this was your final card. Thought Naruto bitterly, Kurinai broke the silence by banging her fist on the table, making Niji and Ayam flinch. The former Hokage seemed even more enraged and was currently glaring daggers at the ever-silent Aburame. Do you even know what you are demanding from the Kaiser? He's married for Kami's sake, and soon to be a father. Argued Kurinai violently, and flinched on seeing the nervous look in Naruto's eyes. The Kaiser was definitely shaken by this demand. By making such a demand and agreeing to the Kaiser's conditions, Shino had delivered an important victory to the Reich but it came with a cost. A heavy one at that. Don't be so unreasonable, Kurinai. There are still a lot of misconceptions among our people about the Kaiser, the only reason they are even daring for this surrender is because you are in the Reich. Our people trust you only. The civilians and soldiers both have not forgotten how the Kaiser acted against Princess Karen and her clan. Explained I am sympathetically, Kurinai flinched on remembering that event. She still felt cold shivers on remembering the way Naruto had acted towards the former fire daimyo. It was one of the cruelest acts Naruto had ever committed against anyone, not even Danzo's death could match with the way he ended Karen's life. Right from executing every member of Karen's clan. Men, women, children, even infants were not spared. Finally after a gruesome fight, when the resistance failed in keeping the fire daimyo safe, the Kaiser cornered the woman. Not only did he defeat her, he humiliated her. Starting from making her walk naked across her own lands, to whiplashing her publicly, revealing every atrocity done by her towards her former subjects, he let the people get a little revenge every now and then. This was apart from the torture the princess suffered in confinement, the Kaiser personally led the charge many times. And only after two years, when Colin's soul itself broke and she begged for death, did he decide to end her miserable existence. Even the poor woman's death was not quick, it began by chopping off her limbs one at a time. And when there was nothing left to cut, he burned her with Amaterasu in public. Kurinai shivered on remembering those horrible memories. Looking into Naruto's cold eyes, she could clearly see he didn't regret what he did to that woman to this day. It was not as if the princess was a saint, she was also another monster who ruled with a strong hand. It was only later did Kurinai discover that Colin was responsible for the death of several of Naruto's root comrades, many of them young children. They were ruthlessly butchered so that Danzo and Karen could start a war against the Land of Woods a few years ago. And this was among the known facts, only Kami knew how much more atrocities the student-master duo committed. And Naruto never forgot, after eliminating Danzo and the village. He diverted all his resources to bring Karen to her end. It was the worst witch hunt Kurinai had ever seen. It had planted an unending fear in the people of the elemental nations. Thousands of noble families surrendered their wealth and themselves to the Reich, 
fearing the same treatment could be inflicted on them if they opposed the Kaiser. It was a bluff, since Naruto had a personal vendetta against Karen which made him act that way. But in the end it only served to benefit him. Even Naruto himself could see the logic in Shino's words, the civilians of the resistance had only offered this surrender because they trusted that Kurinai would keep them safe, that she would be the wall that would safeguard them against any revenge act by the Kaiser, his subordinates, or even the common Reich citizens. I am already the chief of internal affairs. I won't let any harm fall on the surrendering civilians or soldiers, I promise you this. Pledged Karinai, trying to change their minds. While I appreciate the Kaiser for trusting you this much. You are still new at this job, and even if the Kaiser and his army do not discriminate against our people, the citizens of the Reich who are currently bitter with the failed assassination attempt and this unending war, would only harm our people. While you do have power, it's limited to Karinai. But if you are the wife of the Kaiser, you can easily protect our people. Please look at this reasonably. Explained Niji patiently, political marriages are not uncommon in the history of humanity. We are talking about the future of millions of people, and that of the Reich as well. If you reject this chance for peace, the war will continue. The Kages would execute me. And the civilians along with my men would have no other choice but to participate in this feudal conflict. An invasion against the Reich will happen with Saratobi Fortress being used as the base. Explained Shino gravely, looking Naruto straight in the eye, he decided to say his last words to the conflicted leader. For humans, there is an appropriate life and an appropriate death. It's not as if I don't understand the emotional burden we are putting on you but we as leaders need to think about our people. If my death can satisfy the anger held by your people and yourself, then can't you make this little sacrifice to Naruto? Let Niji lead the Black Lancers after my death, the men respect him and they will obey all commands. I refuse to die by execution, instead I will confront the incoming resistance army with the few soldiers who wish to follow me to the end. Do I have your permission, main Kaiser? asked Shino sympathetically, for the first time Naruto's gaze softened, looking into his friend's eye he could clearly see Shino was going to do what he said. He had shared his childhood with this boy, and were good friends during their brief period at the academy. Shino, I. Said Naruto hesitantly, you have my word that nobody will know about this condition between us. My death will be due to my decision to allow my soldiers and civilians time to escape to the Reich, while I hold off the resistance army. This way my people won't hate you, and I can go out to fulfill my last duties. For whatever it's worth, I'm truly sorry for things ending this way. If I were ever to be reborn as a human again, I would like to serve you Kaiser. Just not in this life. Stated Shino sadly, Kurinai, who was still unable to accept the drastic change, could only stare as Shino got up from his seat and offered a crisp salute to the Kaiser. Naruto himself got up from his chair and returned the gesture with the same dedication. Please don't hold my subordinates guilty for my actions. And good luck for the future, my friend. Said Shino honestly, I, Kaiser Naruto Uchiha, pledged to give my best efforts in making the Kaiserin and my people understand the situation. Apart from that, I promise to protect all your people and give them a better life regardless of our shared past enmity. As for you, Aburaim Shino. Said Naruto firmly, yes, your majesty. I confer the root cross on you for the actions you performed for your people's future and for peace. The Reich will always remember you as a worthy enemy, your name will not be forgotten. Promised Naruto, surprising his friend. For the first time, the ever calm Aburame was stunned. It was a known fact that history would be written by the Reich, only those delusional could not see that. By giving him one of the highest military medals, Naruto had saved his honor and prevented him from being remembered as a mere rebel or a traitor of the resistance. Aburame Shino would be known as a capable general and be an example for the next generations. Even in the end, you thought of me as a friend. Thought Shino happily. Thank you for everything, Naruto. Said Shino gratefully, and gave one last salute. 
The screen went blank as the resistance ended the video conference. A faint tear slipped from Naruto's eyes, he had performed his duty as a Kaiser. Aburame Shino was a very controversial figure who simply couldn't be accepted into the Reich. And he doubted Shino wanted that at all, but still one more of his friends was going away. Naruto, I will personally persuade the resistance to rethink again. I won't let this happen. Promised Karinai, but he raised his hand, silencing her. Karinai, please leave me alone for a while. I need time. Requested the Kaiser, but dash. She stopped from saying any more when she saw the grief in his eyes. Not only was he forced to command one of his friends to die, but now he would have to confront Haku and explain the situation. The resistance had put Naruto in an extremely tight spot. If he refuses to marry her, the war will intensify. All military plans which Naruto had made would crumble, since Saratobi Fortress provided an easy backdoor for invasion into the heart of the Reich. The loss to life and property would be immense. And since the Reich had less soldiers, its losses would be grave. More than that, could the Kaiser really let thousands of families be destroyed for a personal problem? Only time would tell what his decision would be, and what it would mean for everyone and the world. Naruto carefully observed his wife's every movement, right from the sharpening of her eyes, to the clenching of her fist, to the grinding of her teeth till the anger arriving on her beautiful face. He had just about finished explaining the events that had transpired in the final negotiations, there was no doubt in his mind that it was a complete victory for the Reich but it came with a cost. A rather personal one at that. He had already ordered Karinai to give him a few hours off, and not to bother him. Whatever decision he made would not only impact his own personal life, but the future of the Reich as well. They had to make the right decision, no matter what. So, what are you going to do? asked Haku flatly, looking him straight in the eye. The Kaiser flinched on hearing her sharp, condescending tone. It was not unknown to him about the rivalry existing between Kurinai and Haku. It had existed since the beginning, while a few years ago it would have amused him to see two of the strongest women on earth fighting for him, but now it had turned into a major headache. It made him long for his bachelor days, when he didn't have to worry about romantic relationships. I haven't decided yet. Answered Naruto honestly, and was surprised when she scoffed. Don't lie, Naruto. You have already made that choice. Said Haku bitterly, and never wavered when he narrowed his dark eyes. What makes you say that? Asked Naruto patiently, yet his voice had started to strain. Oh, come on. Don't take me for a fool, you still love her till this day. I am not blind, but I lived with this fact because you loved me and had a place for me in your heart. But you toss me aside, our child aside the first chance you get, and for what? yelled Haku, surprising him as in their entire married life never once had either of them shouted at each other. Until now. Haku, you're getting the wrong picture dash. Shut up. Pardoning Kurinai even when she was the supreme rebel commander responsible for opposing your rule and death of hundreds of soldiers, granting her asylum, making her the chief of internal affairs, and now the goddamn queen, asked Haku incredulously. I did all of that for the sake of peace. And I never accepted her as my wife. Clarified Naruto, maintaining his cool despite her blatant accusations. She was pissed, and with an understandable reason. The line between leniency and favoritism was extremely thin for the Kaiser when it came to Karina Yuhi. The logical people and those who thought about the future would agree with his choices. But unfortunately, they would be a minority. He doubted history would be kind to him when it came to his decisions with the women in his life. But you never denied it either, didn't you? retorted Haku hotly. I think you're being unfair in your assessment. Replied Naruto patiently, trying to make her see reason. When he tried to grasp her hand, she slapped his arm away. Naruto's teeth grinded against each other, but he kept quiet if only for the sake of his unborn son who was probably listening to their argument right now. You are the one who's being unfair. To me, to our child, 
we took vows to each other. She was shocked when an extremely ruthless gaze appeared in his dark eyes. He hadn't even lifted a finger towards her, yet she felt herself getting nervous by just looking into those eyes. And I also took a vow to defend this Reich. To protect those 30 million Reich citizens who have entrusted their lives to me, to make the right decisions for those 36,000 Reich soldiers who stay away from their homes, families ready to die for this nation and for me. Declared Naruto confidently, his voice as strong as steel and matched by equally fierce determination in his eyes. You'll sacrifice our marriage? Our child, too? asked Haku in shock, I am the Kaiser of this Reich. Make no mistake I will sacrifice each and every child of mine for this Reich. The Reich does not exist for the Uchiha dynasty, rather the dynasty exists for protecting this nation. Every leader of this nation will always put this nation, its people, its future above their own families, friends, and interests. This I promise as the founder of this nation. Pledged Naruto, Haku was completely stunned on hearing his promise, there were no words arriving on her lips to say to him. The only thing she could do was stare in those ruthless eyes that were hell-bent on protecting the Reich, no matter the costs. I have never looked at another woman the moment I entered into a relationship with you. Have I ever betrayed your trust? Give me one incident where I was disloyal to you or to our marriage. I gave my best efforts in this relationship, yes Karinai was my past but I never let her get in our way. And yet you sit here, and accuse me of disloyalty right in front of my face, asked Naruto sadly, I dash. Did I ever ask the doctors to confirm whether the child in your belly is mine or not? The Kaiserin felt the ground beneath her crumble. The blind rage disappeared from her eyes as for the first time she saw the impact of her own words. She could now see the hurt, disappointment and anger in Naruto's eyes. In her own insecurities, she had accused him of the biggest crime. Something he had never committed. Never once had Naruto doubted her in any aspects of their life, be it personal or professional. And now. Something had broken today between them. Something fundamental. Take good care of your health and that of this child. Rest assured, nobody would usurp your right as the Kaiserin. Till then. Said Naruto stoically and without a word he got up and started walking away. Naruto, I'm sorry Dash. She flinched when he abruptly turned around and glared at her. Don't ever apologize for your thoughts. I'm glad that you said the truth as to how you feel about me. I can live with the tag of an unfaithful husband, but I will not allow thousands of families to die and jeopardize the future of this Reich. Even the Kaiser doesn't have that right, I will not run away from my responsibilities either towards this nation or towards you and this child. Promised Naruto, and turned around. Ignoring her cries to come back, he swiftly exited out of the room effectively hiding his tears from her. Outside, Sasuke stood at the side watching his friend with a sympathetic gaze. Told you, women complicate things. Don't lose heart, she'll see reason in time. If not then it's her loss. Advised Sasuke, Naruto didn't seem satisfied with the reassurance, but his tears had dried up. Frowning in the direction Haku's quarters was, his fists clenched. If she had not been pregnant, they would have had a war over that unjust accusation. But their child was innocent, and it would be cruel to make him suffer on their behalf. You're right. A kaiser shouldn't bend to the whims of women. My first duty and loyalty lies only with the Reich and by that code I shall act from this point. Said Naruto coldly, you're pissed. Commented Sasuke bemusedly, with good reason. How dare she? Said Naruto furiously, and would have growled louder if Sasuke had not clapped him on the back playfully. The Reich army commander placed his hand on his frustrated best friend's shoulder, and gave him a small wink. Maybe women go crazy before the D-Day. I was worried she might punch your lights out, send you back into another coma. Teased Sasuke, making Naruto's eyebrows twitch. I'm stronger than her, you know. Retorted Naruto, as Sasuke scoffed. Don't ever underestimate the fury of a pregnant woman, brother. 
I even heard that sneaky Shino almost pissed his pants when your wife went gorilla over him. Haku can be quite mean at times. Said Sasuke, and smiled when Naruto's shoulders slumped. Could have used that warning before this meeting, you know. Complained Naruto, receiving another wink in return. And miss out on my share of daily soap? Nah. Team. Enko really corrupted you. Or maybe you were born crazy, Sasachan. TCH. Naruto massaged his forehead tiredly, looking back now he could finally understand the headaches Hiruzen Saratobi must have suffered over the years as the Hokage. He had summoned his most trusted subordinates to assist him in analyzing all angles, and make the right choice for the Reich and him as well. Instead of doing that, all of them had been divided and were continuously arguing among each other. What a mess! Thought Naruto tiredly, we absolutely cannot accept this marriage. The Kaiser is already married, and has an empress who is loved by the people. Think about the impact it will have on the Kaiser's reputation. Warned Tsunade fiercely, so, for the sake of reputation you will be willing to sacrifice millions of refugees? Intensify the war? How many of our own Reich citizens will die if that happens? Asked Kakashi flatly, the Reich will prevail through sheer courage and strength. As long as the Kaiser is with us, we cannot lose. Said Tsunade confidently, and was surprised on seeing the anger in Kakashi's eyes. Tell that to the hundreds of young boys who will die due to your decision. Tell those same words to their parents, siblings, friends, and lovers. Look them in the eye, and try to claim that you made their sons and daughters die for the greater good. Don't preach patriotism when you are not the one who has to risk their life on the line at the battlefield. Scolded Kakashi, how dare you? Said Tsunade furiously. The conflict would have extended further if not for the mass of sand that distanced the two senior advisors, who were this close to hitting each other. It was a well-known fact that Tsunade considered Haku as her own daughter, while Kakashi being the rational man had advocated for all those people whose lives would be affected by their decision. They were surprised when a relieved smile came on the Kaiser's face, as Gara entered the court. Quickly getting up from his throne, Naruto strode towards the young commander and enveloped him in a tight hug. I'm glad to see you in good health, Gara," Said Naruto happily, he was surprised when his foster little brother gently broke the hug and kneeled before him. There was shame and pain evident in Gara's eyes as he bowed his head before the Kaiser. I have failed you, main Kaiser. I could not protect the fortress, I want to take full responsibility for that failure. I am ready to serve any sentence you have for me, but please spare my subordinates. They fought valiantly for the Reich, this failure lies solely on my shoulders alone. Said Gara sincerely, eliciting a soft smile from the blonde ruler. There are times when you have to fight, and times when you can't. The sole responsibility of a commander is safeguarding his nation and protecting the soldiers under his command. Get up, Gara. Ordered Naruto, the redhead obeyed the command and hesitantly looked his leader in the eye. That famed Shino Aburame had my respect because he always fought battles where he could win. The enemy had you outnumbered and surrounded. You did the right thing by surrendering, I will not let thousands of soldiers die in the name of pride. And in the end, we did regain that fortress, so you're off the hook, explained Naruto, as a relieved smile came on Gara's face. Thank you for your kindness. Ah, enough of the formalities. I need your help right now. Said Naruto sheepishly, wrapping his arms around Gara's shoulders. Naruto used the next few minutes to quickly explain the entire situation to Gara. The red head merely gave a blank look to both Tsunade and Kakashi who looked quite surprised on receiving the stare from the former Jinchuriki. I see. Said Gara calmly, yeah, I expected answers from these two but they are rather interested in fighting each other. Sasuke has flatly refused to entangle himself in political matters, I don't know what to do. Confessed Naruto, getting a nod from the red head. Gara simply sat on the seat offered to him as Naruto returned to his throne. 
For the next few minutes, silence followed in the royal court as all eyes rested on the thinking redhead. Gara didn't even mind the stares he was receiving, and was completely busy in his thoughts. All the while, Naruto seemed extremely nervous. And after a few minutes his foster brother finally spoke. As it stands, there can only be one Kazarin in the Reich. Haku's position must stay, there should not be any replacement or another who shares that title. Advised Gara, making Tsunade smile triumphantly. Kakashi frowned and was about to argue, when Gara raised his hand making the smile disappear from the Senju's face. But at the same time, we cannot avoid this request of marriage. Shino definitely put us in quite a spot, even in the end he continues to give us more problems to deal with. Said Gara irritatedly. What do you have in mind? Asked Naruto seriously. Induct Karinai into the Uchiha clan and appoint her as the female head. Apart from the Kaiser, Sasuke, Haku, and the unborn prince, there are practically no more Uchiha left. Sasuke has no heir, and this Reich was founded by the Uchiha dynasty. If anything were to happen to this already small family, the Reich would involve itself in different power struggles with various factions fighting each other. For the sake of unity of the Reich, it is imperative that the Uchihas remain in command. Explained Gara seriously, but wouldn't that be called favoritism? Asked Naruto, concern evident in his eyes. Either way, people are going to blame us no matter the choice we make. By making Kurinai the female representative of the Uchiha, we give her enough power since she is a part of the royal family. At the same time, Haku remains the Kaiserin, retaining the highest authority. But it still does not change the fact that you will have to marry Kurinai. Stated Gara seriously, and why is there a need for such an action? asked Tsunade sharply. Because only appointing Kurinai as a partner clan head would make her look like a puppet. The refugees and surrendering resistance soldiers will clearly see through it, but I can present a valid reason that can make the Reich accept this marriage. And at the same time, protect Haku and the prince. Explained Gara. nobody said it, but all of them were clearly more interested in hearing what this boy had to say. Despite being the youngest among them, Gara was displaying extreme leadership abilities even off the battlefield. It was one of the reasons the Kaiser treasured the red head, and valued his advice on several occasions. What do you suggest, Gara? asked Kakashi diplomatically, two kings. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise on hearing Gara say that, no more words were necessary as the Kaiser easily understood what the red head was hinting at. It actually solved one of Naruto's biggest problems as a ruler. The Kaiser will marry Kurinai to expand the Uchiha clan, and appoint her as the young prince's godmother. That way, it will resolve any doubts about Kurinai trying to harm the prince. A few years later, the Kaiser will have a child with Kurinai. That family will be the branch family, while Haku and her son will be the main family. Said Gara. Just like the Hyuga, but? Argued Kakashi, as Gara again raised his hand. I know what you are going to say. But it is the law of the Reich that the next Kaiser is chosen solely on his own abilities, and not through birth. Even the ruling Kaiser cannot state who will succeed him, since that will be decided by a royal test on political, military and social issues and personal skills of the candidate with the citizens as judges. This Reich rules over the entire world, it may be extremely difficult for our children to maintain complete control. We will make it a law that each main and branch royal family will only have one heir, and appoint both the Kaiserin and the female head of the Uchiha as the godmother of each other's children. That way we reduce the power struggle and establish bonding among families, unlike the Hyuga. In case if the heirs of either family get killed, assassinated, or are incompetent the other can take his place. That way we will fill the gap, and ensure that the rulership stays with the Uchiha. This solution is not without its own risks, but it is far better than entrusting the fate of this Reich to one man. It may happen that not all of the Kaiser's descendants are as capable as him. In that case, there must be other better options available. At some point of time, we must stop being so paranoid about the future. 
We must have faith that our children will protect this Reich and make it flourish. We have already given them a solid foundation. Let them decide how they want their lives to be, and that's all I wanted to say, finished Gara. Silence prevailed in the room, as each member exchanged affirmative nods among each other. With consensus established among them, they turned towards the Kaiser for the final decision. Seeing this, Naruto got up on his feet and looked them straight in the eye. Royal servants walked into the room and handed over a glass of champagne to everyone, as the Kaiser raised his own toast. Prosit, Kurinai seemed extremely nervous as she entered the personal quarters of the Kaiserin. It was actually quite a surprise for her that Haku wished to speak to her personally. If rumors were to be believed within the palace, only a few hours ago a big fight had occurred between the royal pair and the Kaiser seemed actually furious when he came out. As she entered inside, she saw Haku seated in the bed drinking a glass of water. There were dark marks under her eyes along with her puffy cheeks which were clear indicators that this woman had recently cried, and her appearance was far from the beautiful Kaiserin who ruled over the Reich. Kaiserin, said Karinai hesitantly, making the other woman sigh. Come, have a seat, replied Haku calmly, Karinai did as told and took a seat on Haku's right side of the bed. It was not too close to invade the Kaiser's personal space, but not too far away either. They held each other's gazes for a while, before. I never wanted this to happen. I want you to know that, said Karinai honestly, making Haku smile. I know. We both are many things, but certainly not partner thieves. Rest assured, I don't hold all of this mess against you clarified Haku, and saw relief spreading through the tensed Kunoichi's face. I see. Said Karinai neutrally, do you love him? Yes. Both of them were satisfied with getting straight to the point, and getting honest answers in return. They doubted either of them had the patience or will to entertain any mind games. Honesty would be the best possible course if they wanted to survive the storm that was coming in their lives. Karinai hesitantly took out a sheet of paper given to her by Naruto himself. She could still remember his harsh words and the cold look in his eyes at that moment. Make sure the Kaiserin gets this. The decision has been made. Reading over the royal decree signed by the Kaiser a bittersweet smile came over Haku's face. She sighed tiredly, and placed the letter aside. I really pissed him off this time. No, that would be an understatement said Haku sadly, truly ashamed for lashing out at him that way. Looking back, she could see that he had actually come to her to find a way out. And in her rage and insecurity, she had pushed him into a corner leaving him no choice. But this was far better than she expected, he had kept his promise even after the harsh accusations she laid on him. Judging from Karinai's curious look, Haku took a gamble and told her about that argument. Karinai for her part, listened without interjecting and never tried to impose her own views about the situation. I can understand why you said that, but rest assured he never once did anything that was unfaithful towards your marriage. Said Karinai clearly, surprising Haku. He didn't? Even when he dash, said Haku hesitantly, not finishing the last words. Naruto loves both of us equally. But he never did a single act that would betray either of our trusts, he even denied having any sort of relationship with me because he loved you and wanted to be a good father to your child. He's not perfect, but he's one of the rare ones still out there. Advised Karinai, and explained what had happened between her and Naruto before they went to the negotiations. To say Haku was mortified would be an understatement. I will talk to him. Make him understand that you were simply distressed. Assured Karinai, surprising the Kaiserin. And why would you do that? Won't this be less beneficial for you? Questioned Haku, making Karinai sigh. I don't care about political power. The only thing I ever wanted was a better future for my people and to be with him. By God's grace, I am getting that even when I don't deserve it. But I won't have this happiness, by making you and this child suffer. We may have our differences, but if we have one thing in common then it is our love for Naruto. Since this child is also a part of him, 
I'll try my best to be a good godmother to him. Promised Karinai, Haku held her gaze, but Karinai never wavered. The Kaiserin for the first time saw why her husband could actually love this woman, in a way neither Haku or Karinai were too different from each other. Both of them fiercely wanted to defend their people, their families, and their beliefs. Maybe that was the reason why both of them had butted heads for so long. They were too similar to reach a conclusion. Maybe I misunderstood you, Karinai. Said Haku honestly, letting go of her prejudice which she had held for years. I can now see why Naruto fell in love with you. May I? requested Karinai. And Haku saw the woman's gaze fixed on her belly. Deciding to trust her, the Kaiserin gave a nod as Karinai put her hand gently on the swollen belly. To her surprise, she detected minimal to no activity from the person inside. Haku seemed to have guessed her confusion, which made the Kaiserin smile. He's a slacker, just like his father. He doesn't even kick much since it takes too much effort. Said Haku lightheartedly, surprising Karinai. Really? I've never seen Naruto neglecting his duties. Replied Karinai, give him a retirement home and a good pension package. And then this Reich will have to recruit a new Kaiser, Naruto only does work when he's forced to or he feels motivated enough to work. Confessed Haku, a fond smile arriving on her lips. Yeah, now that I think about it, during our days as Team 7 he often tried to spend much time reading that book. Said Karinai distastefully, receiving an equally disgusting look from the Kaiserin. Don't remind me. It took me years to make him stop reading that trash. Hinted Haku, surprising Karinai. How did you do it? Even when I tore several of his Ika Ika novels, he got new ones from Kami knows where. Complained Karinai, making Haku smirk triumphantly. Oh, well. A few nights on the couch, no sex for a few weeks, and the threat of cutting off his balls along with a few more tricks. Men are actually easy to control if you know their weakness, even the Kaiser is no exception to that, confessed Haku, Karinai blinked in surprise, but a moment later the same sly smile came on her face as Haku's because she had just discovered one of the Kaiser's little weaknesses. I'll remember that. Said Karinai confidently. Haku laughed boisterously on hearing that promise, she could only pity Naruto for getting himself involved with the two of them. He was certainly going to have his hands full. I think maybe we'll get along just fine. Said Haku with a smile, before Karinai could return the gesture, the color drained from the Kaiser's face as she looked below and then back at a surprised Karinai who knew what had just happened. Medic. Shino could only stare in disbelief as the ground beneath his feet shook violently. It was not just that area, but the entire battlefield which was shaking. Beside him the 500 resistance defectors who had decided to follow their leader to the end could only stare in horror as they witnessed the scene in front of them. Commander, this is said his second-in-command in a terrified voice, they had arrived here to buy time for the majority of surrendering resistance soldiers and civilians to escape to Reich territories. Shino and the ones who followed him on this suicide mission knew very well that their deaths were imminent. But never in their wildest dreams had they imagined this. As far as their eyes could see they could only spot thousands of resistance soldiers marching towards them. While this was not unexpected, but rather what was shocking was the sheer number of combat troops on the enemy side. Something's not right. The resistance never had this size of an army, and these men don't look like civilian recruits who have just been given a weapon to fight. Thought Shino worriedly, looking into the eyes of his nervous men, he could easily see their fear. And Shino couldn't blame them. Compared to the enemy force, their small group of volunteers were not even worthy of being called an ant. Sound a general order of retreat. Set up the decoys and traps. They'll buy us time to run. Said Shino quickly, but, Commander. This will only slow them down barely. Argued his subordinate, can't help it. We'll simply be massacred without even harming the enemy. What we're going to do is link up with our retreating soldiers and civilians, make them reach to safety. 
and send out our fastest messenger bird to the right capital. Commanded Shino. What should we tell the Kaiser? Asked a nervous officer. The Umbu commander gulped nervously. He didn't know how this happened or who orchestrated this. Whatever the case may be, for the first time in his life Shino Aburame was scared. His tactical mind was going blank on seeing the monstrous army in front of him, how the hell were they supposed to deal with this? Tell him an entire force of 150,000 resistance fighters is marching towards him. Sitting atop one of the rooftops of the Reich capital, a contented smile appeared on a man's lips, his dark red eyes keenly observing the shining moon in the sky. The atmosphere in the center of the Reich was extremely relaxing. He sighed when another person emerged from beneath the rooftop and appeared beside him. Report. Said Toby seriously, our armies have joined the resistance. As per your orders they shall attack and crush the outnumbered Reich army. Informed White Zetsu, we outnumber them 3, 1. Plus the element of surprise is on our side. Said Black Zetsu, a sick grin visible on his dark face. I'm more interested in our special force inside the capital. Are they in position? You know, I don't trust that man. Said Toby bitterly, getting a nod from his partner. He's doing his job. The fact that he managed to sneak himself and several of his monsters in the disguise of refugees is an impressive feat I have placed a few of my brothers to keep an eye on him, but Toby do you really think he can keep the Kaiser busy and eliminate him in time? Asked White Zetsu worriedly, yes. Getting up on his feet, the Akatsuki leader observed the peaceful capital one last time as his Mangekyo Sharingan came to life. The communication device on his ear activated connecting him to his men inside the capital. All forces, charge. We've got invaders in Ward 24. District Mao has been rocked by multiple explosions. Enemy forces fighting across the entire capital. Civilian and military casualties rising. The highest military leaders of the Reich and heads of government could only grimly listen to the deteriorating reports. Their grave eyes fixed on their Kaiser who was standing near the window, observing his burning capital. There was a sheet of paper in his hand, an emergency message from the frontier. So it begins. Stated Naruto, he could see the fear, anxiousness, anger, pain in the eyes of his people. The news was indeed grave, even he couldn't deny that. Before he could even implement his plans for victory, his enemies had united and had struck at his nation. Your Highness, the Kaiserin has gone into labor. Everyone was surprised on hearing the news, and saw a bittersweet smile arriving on the Kaiser's face. For Tsunade and Kakashi, it was an extremely emotional sight when an already armed Naruto went towards a stand. Placing his hand on the hook, the Kaiser took his coat with the swastika mark on the front and the symbol of eagle on its back. Main Kaiser, what are you doing? asked Kakashi worriedly, as Naruto turned around to face them. I'm doing what every Kaiser must do in the event of an attack on his nation. Answered Naruto, but dash, don't compare this event to the one in the past. The stakes are too high this time. It's not just the fate of one village but that of entire humanity itself. The future of our race, the rise and fall of our Reich is at stake now. Declared Naruto, placing his traditional face mask, the young leader looked like an exact copy of his father which only served to increase the worries of Kakashi and Tsunade. Sasuke stepped beside his best friend, as both of them observed the raging capital together. Fully armed and eyes shining with ambition, they looked ahead. This is it. Said Sasuke seriously, well, my brother, this will be the last battle that we share. Said Naruto with a smile, receiving a smirk from his friend. We have fought our entire lives. Either against each other, or together against the entire world. Nothing would please be more but to rest this sword of mine. Proclaimed Sasuke, his hand tightening over his weapon. The preparations that I ordered? asked Naruto. Done. Are you sure you want to commit everything? questioned Sasuke flatly, yes. Hold the front lines until I arrive. Can you do that? Looking straight into each other's eyes, 
the two boys who were brothers in all but by parentage made silent promises. This was the moment for which they had fought till now, everything had been for this day. They won't get through us, Kaiser. I promise you that. Said Sasuke confidently, getting a nod in return. Good. Follow the plan, avoid combat and send our troops into battle unless I command. We have not just made those countermeasures for a fancy show, we will show those rebels just who they are up against. Pledged Naruto, and was surprised when Sasuke bit his lip. I have two requests which I want you to grant. Requested Sasuke, no dancing around the subject was the way the Reich army commander worked. Speak. Sakura's pregnant. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise on hearing that, this was certainly not what he had expected. But then again, Sasuke was not one to share too much of his personal life. But if Sasuke was acting this serious, then the news must be true. I would say congratulations, but now's not the time. Let me guess, you don't want me to place her directly in the heat of the battle. Suggested Naruto. Yes, then I'll make sure she takes command over the medical stations. Treat our war wounded, she's the best medic we have after Tsunade. I can't let her talents go to waste at such a crucial time. Do you understand? I do. And I have one more request. Since your own son will be born tonight, I am hereby forfeiting the Uchiha name. Declared Sasuke, he was not surprised on seeing the brief shock in the Kaiser's eyes, and he quickly raised his hand before his friend could protest any further. I represent the violent past of the Uchihas. With your dynasty, they will get a good name in history. Besides, there can't be two important people bearing the same surname, it'll only confuse the citizens and put their loyalties in jeopardy. I want to start a new fresh family that is devoid of the dark past of the Uchiha clan. Explain Sasuke honestly, Sasuke, are you really sure about this? Asked Naruto in a concerned voice, I've made my decision. Replied Sasuke flatly, making Naruto sigh. If his friend was this determined, then who was he to deny Sasuke his right? Very well. I grant both requests of yours. Anything else? Brother, asked Naruto calmly, Sasuke remained silent for a moment as he observed the vast empire which he had built with the help of his best friend. Looking back now, he could finally see that he lived a life without regrets. If I don't make it back, I want you to look after my Fami Dash. Silence. I, Kaiser Naruto Uchiha, command you to fight and survive. Wars are not won by dying in battle, they are won by making the other son of bitch die. Scolded Naruto, Sasuke saw a strange fire burning in his friend's eyes. It brought a relaxed smile on his face as he gave an affirmative nod. As long as they had the Kaiser, they could win. Even in these grim conditions, Naruto believed that not only could their Reich survive but it could emerge victorious. And as a faithful comrade, he would believe in his leader. When Naruto turned around he was further surprised by the arrival of two more members of his vast family in the room. Hinata, Hanar, why are you dressed in combat gears? Didn't you want to quit the ninja life? asked Naruto in surprise. Both women smiled as Hanar stepped beside a grinning Kakashi, and Hinata stepped beside Sasuke. A warrior always returns home one day. Said Hinata, giving the Kaiser a small wink. For us, this family has always been our home. No matter what, we want to fight beside our loved ones. Said Hanar happily, grasping her husband's hand. Before the touched Kaiser could say something, firm footsteps were heard in the corridor and moments later a few more people entered into the war room. The Kaiser gave a firm nod and Guren leading the sound four gave him a crisp salute and took their positions beside the others. What surprised the blonde leader was the last person to arrive who was now kneeling before him. Enko. Said Naruto, and saw the pain in her eyes. I've always not made the right decisions in my life. And despite everything you've done a lot for me, Naruto. I still don't believe in this system of the Reich, but I believe in you. All my life you were like a little brother to me, yes I was pissed at you when you betrayed the village. 
but I want to fight for you in this hour of need. I want to repay you back for all the love, mercy you have shown towards me. Let me fight beside your side." Requested Enko sincerely, Naruto looked into her eyes for a few moments, then at Kakashi who smiled and gave a nod. Grabbing her shoulders, he made the woman get back on her feet. Then in a move which surprised every person in the room, the Kaiser wrapped Enko in a warm hug as a small tear slipped from his eye. Welcome back, sister. Said Naruto happily, making Enko tear up and smirk at the same time. You owe me Dango for this, Naruto. Teased Enko, as Naruto chuckled. Sure, I do. Just as their conversation came to an end, the large screen in the room came alive with the face of Shino Aburame appearing before the Kaiser. The former resistance commander gave a crisp salute to the Reich leader, making Naruto chuckle. It seems you're a damn lucky man, Shino. Said Naruto. Well, fate seems to have other plans for me. It simply doesn't allow me to die an honorable death. Replied Shino, as the Kaiser sighed. So, what are you going to do now? You did send me the warning regarding the invading army, does that mean you are ready to serve me? Asked Naruto seriously, tell me something, Kaiser. Will you pardon me if I defend the Reich in this crucial hour? Demanded Shino, all eyes turned towards Naruto who simply got a smirk on his face. Taking a deep breath, he looked his friend straight in the eye. If your actions are worthy of saving the lives of my subjects, then I will pardon you of all your crimes, give you a position in my army. Offered Naruto, then I am at your command, main Kaiser. Said Shino devotedly, and bowed before his new leader. Take command of the Black Lancers. Observe each movement of the enemy, and report it to headquarters. My officers will be arriving very soon to take command, you will follow their orders. And Shino, I know that you're not an idiot. So I suggest you remain true to your word, or else I will kill all your men and make you watch. Threaten Naruto, you have my word, Kaiser. Both as a friend and soldier. You can count on me. We'll see. With that Naruto ended the connection and was not at all surprised on seeing the concerned looks he received from his comrades. Sasuke was nearly on the verge of blasting out at him, and with good reason. I know what you guys are thinking. But we need every armed fighter we can get, and he's a skilled officer. That doesn't meant that I trust him. Explained Naruto, what are your orders, asked Kakashi seriously, Sasuke, Gara. Both warriors stepped forward on hearing the command of their leader, and bowed before the Kaiser. Go to the front lines, take command of our army. Sasuke, I am placing Shino under your leadership. Keep an eye on him. Ordered Naruto, yes, Kaiser, replied both men in unison, Tsunade Senju. Yes, your majesty. Said Tsunade sincerely, bowing before the boy whom she loved as her own son. Take command over the frontline medical units. Sakura Haruno will remain in the rear and lead the medical stations. Save as many as you can, reduce the sufferings of those you can't save, and kill anyone who gets in your way. Said Naruto fiercely, it shall be done, Kaiser. Replied Tsunade with equal ferociousness. Hataki Kakashi. The copy ninja stepped forward and quickly bowed before the Kaiser, his heartbeat increased when Naruto looked at him critically. You're veteran warrior. And I trust your instincts, I am appointing you the supreme commander of all our forces. You will stay in the rear, and guide Sasuke, Gara, along with Shino. Maintain communications and order among our forces, and try to avoid engaging the enemy until I arrive. Can you do that for me? asked Naruto seriously, I will do my best, Kaiser. Promised Kakashi, getting a nod in return. Durin, I want you to take control of the Reich forces inside the capital and repel the invaders. Don't disappoint me. Commanded Naruto, yes, sir. They will all be dead before sunrise tomorrow. Pledged the crystal style user, Taiyuya, Jirobu, Sakan, Yukon, Kadamaru. Said Naruto quickly, 
as the ninjas who had been his royal guards for the past four years kneeled before him. Evacuate subjects Zero and Alpha to the secured locations. Take the entire royal guard with you. Said Naruto gravely, but main Kaiser, wouldn't that leave you defenseless? Asked Taiyuya worriedly, I can take care of myself. Now, carry out my orders. Commanded Naruto strictly, his voice rising a little higher striking the point home. Not wanting to face the full wrath of the Kaiser, the members of the sound fair quickly nodded. Only the four of them, the Kaiser and Sasuke Uchiha knew how important those subjects were. Under no circumstances could they be allowed to fall under any enemy hands. It would be a mess which the Reich simply didn't have the resources to fight against. Hanar, take control over the civilian government. Pacify the people, maintain order with the help of the ministers and local police. Shelter the refugees, take them to safe bunkers. Protect the women, children, and old people at all costs. Get the able-bodied men to keep watch 24-7, instructed Naruto, I will not fail you, Kaiser. Promised Hanar, getting a nod from Kakashi too. The officers got quite concerned when the Kaiser coughed up a bit, but he simply waved off their concerns with a smile. Finally, he turned towards Hinata and Enko who also followed the tradition of kneeling before him. I want you two to be on my personal guard. Along with a few other soldiers, we'll give directions to the others and clear out this capital from enemy troops. After that we will head towards the front lines. Understood, asked Naruto, seriously, H.A.I. Everyone was surprised when Naruto unlocked a sealed box and took out his most powerful weapon. Strapping the infamous Ryujin Jaka on his waist, the Kaiser started walking forward as strange marks appeared on his wrists, one which Kakashi and Tsunade instantly recognized. Impossible. Said both veterans in unison, they were not allowed to explain why they said that when servants entered the room, and offered one last drink to each and every member in the room. Naruto took the lead by raising his glass, with the others following suit. Pros it. An exhausted Karinai had just finished transferring the Kaiserin to the hospital, where the surgery to bring the young prince into their world had instantly begun. She had seen how much pain and distress Haku was in, and wanted to stay by the woman's side but the doctors had flatly refused to entertain any intruders and risk their work. Even the Kaiser would not be allowed to attend. This was after all the first royal child and the heir to the Reich throne. They were taking every precaution as humanly possible. And to add further to their worries, the Reich had just been attacked both from inside and outside. She wondered what Naruto was doing right now. Her question was answered quite soon when she found him nervously sitting in the empty corridor. Hinata and Anko, along with several other soldiers were standing at the exits preventing anyone from disturbing their leader. On seeing her walking towards him, the nervous Kaiser quickly got up and approached her. How is she? asked Naruto worriedly. She's as fine as any woman undergoing labor could be. We're doing everything we can. Assured Karinai but dash. She placed a firm hand on his shoulder and wrapped him in a warm hug. He quickly buried himself into her arms, even as he tried to hide the tension and worry he felt both for his family and the Reich at this moment. I am heading out soon enough. Said Naruto seriously, stopping her breath abruptly. Quickly breaking the hug, she looked at his face worriedly. Even a civilian could foresee how dangerous things were out there and despite her opposition to this decision she knew he would not stop. He was not the kind of leader who abandoned his people in the face of disaster. I will join you as soon as possible. But first, I need to make sure the Kaiserin and the prince get to safety. Said Karinai, making him smile. Thank you for everything, Karinai. Said Naruto mysteriously, before she could ask why he was saying that, he quickly kneeled in front of her. Without a word, he took her hand in his. Their eyes connected, and she gasped in shock when he took out a ring from his pocket. Despite what I told the others, the situation is quite grim out there. I have to be strong and show a positive side to them, but it is possible that I may not return. Said Naruto hesitantly, 
No, replied Kurinai stubbornly, Yuhi Kurinai, would you marry me? asked Naruto sincerely, one look in his eyes could show how nervous he was. She kneeled alongside him and took his face in her hands, planting a deep kiss on his lips. Afterward she hesitantly took the ring in her hand, but made no effort in putting it on, surprising the Kaiser. I will hold this for you, marry me and be a father to our child when you return. Said Kurinai proudly, and deep down he fell in deeper love with this woman on hearing her accept Haku and his son, as her own as well. Try to dash, argued Naruto, but she raised her hand while shaking her head in denial. This ring will be our promise. I've lost you too many times, and I can't go through that again. No matter what, you must survive. Not just for me, or Haku, or our son, but for all our comrades, all the soldiers and citizens, this Reich. For their sake, you must live. Explained Kurinai, as he smiled. Yeah. Said Naruto hesitantly, and blinked when she grabbed him by his collar. There was a dangerous fire in her eyes, daring him to say something that would inflict her wrath on him. Never in their entire lives had he seen something like this in her beautiful ruby-colored eyes. All of us have placed our lives, our faiths, our futures to you. Be worthy of that trust, Naruto. Scolded Kurinai, as his eyes widened in shock. I will. Said Naruto quickly, when her eyes moistened he quickly claimed her lips and initiated a passionate kiss. His arms encircled around her waist, savoring this moment for all eternity. Despite everything that had happened, both of them were here together at this moment. And that was all that mattered to him. I love you, Kurinai. Said Naruto happily, as he placed his forehead against her. I love you too, Naruto. An eerie silence engulfed in the entire corridor, it was exactly 10.30 on the clock placed on the wall. And every person standing nearby had their eyes wide in shock when the cry of an infant was heard. Haku was hanging between exhaustion and shock, her eyes overflowing with tears as the sweet, soft cry of an infant continuously reached her ears. She was sweating heavily and her breathing was heavy, but she felt more happier in this moment than she had been in her entire life. Not a few seconds later, the door to the operation theater was blown apart much to the horror of the doctors and nurses. Sakura, who had just finished delivering the baby, angrily walked forward and gave a harsh bonk on an extremely nervous Kaiser's head who had barged inside, scaring everyone. Haku laughed on seeing the funny scene as Sakura gave a few more bops to her friend, and even scolded him for barging in so recklessly. Fortunately, Kurinai quickly entered inside and saved the cornered Kaiser. With Sakura out of the way, Naruto instantly rushed towards her side and kneeled near her. The once strong Kaiser was nearly on the verge of breaking down with the amount of tears, fear and worry in his eyes. His hands trembled as he touched Haku's cheeks to feel that she was indeed real, and the cry of an infant in another corner of the room was not just a dream. Are, you, okay? asked Naruto nervously, as Haku barely managed to stifle her giggles. You look like you just delivered a child instead of me. Teased Haku, as he took her face in his hands and kissed her. Don't scare me like this again, okay? ordered Naruto, making her smile. They smiled and stared into each other's eyes. She could see he was fully dressed for battle, and the only reason he had stayed behind for this long was for her and their child's sake. Her fears increased as she tried to imagine the mayhem that awaited him, but he grasped her hand tightly. It'll be all right. I promise. Said Naruto seriously, no hesitation or doubts were now present in his heart thanks to Karinai. They were interrupted when that crying sound increased and was now nearing towards them. Blinking in surprise, Naruto got up and turned around only to freeze in his spot when he saw Kurinai carrying a small bundle in her arms. Sakura was also beside her, as both ladies gave bright smiles to Haku. Nervously taking a step forward, he tried to take a peek of his own son only to see Kurinai glare at him. He didn't falter despite his trembling legs, and forcefully tried again only to be stopped when Sakura placed her hand firmly on his face, 
almost smashing his nose and blocking his vision. Stop being a baby, Naruto. There's one in the room already. Scolded Sakura, it's courtesy to allow the mother the first look of the child. Chided Karinai, as the Kaiser huffed. With his patience already on the brink of extinction, he again sneaked a peek and saw Haku coddling that bundle to her chest and laying a soft kiss inside. Before he lost it, Kurinai and Sakura quickly got out of the way allowing him to get the first glimpse of his son which made him gulp in shock. Haku, Kurinai and Sakura keenly observed as Naruto came forward and curiously looked at the babbling infant. Unlike popular expectations, the young prince had dark black hair like his mother, he was extremely fair and had almost similar facial patterns and eyes like his father. Despite the wrapped cloth the baby boy was in, he did seem healthy but looked a little uncomfortable in his mother's arms. Then in a move which surprised all the females, Naruto simply poked his finger on the infant's forehead. Much to their surprise, the boy stopped crying instantly. Opening his dark eyes as fully as he could, the baby tried to wriggle his small arms towards his father but was failing miserably. He's so tiny. Said Naruto innocently, eliciting smiles from the women in the room. Is this the first time you are seeing a just-born infant? Asked Sakura kindly, as Naruto poked his son again on the forehead making the baby smile. Yes. Haku was actually quite surprised as the little baby's attempts to get out of her arms increased. Tracing his target, she smiled on seeing how anxious their son was to go towards his father. Naruto looked in her eyes, and when she nodded he carefully took the boy in his arms. There was a strange milky look in Naruto's eyes, as he touched his son's cheeks. Unfortunately, his son took the kaiser's thumb in his mouth instantly. I finally understand what you mean, father. Maybe being a dad won't be so bad after all. Thought Naruto happily, as if understanding his thoughts, the tiny baby boy smiled innocently and right there the child had gained the Kaiser's affection forever. Naruto couldn't explain it, before coming inside he had an entire sea full of doubts, misgivings about his ability to be a father. Whether he would be a good one or bad one? Sometimes he actually wished to escape, but not anymore. All his logical powers went straight out of the window, he couldn't understand what changed in these few moments. This strange, warm feeling inside his heart when he looked at this child made him so happy. If all the pain he had suffered over the years was to lead him to this point, and meet this child then he didn't regret it one bit. Naruto. Said Karina gently, breaking the Kaiser out of his emotional trance. Blinking he looked up to see the smiling faces of Kurinai, Sakura and a very relieved Haku all of whom were affectionately staring at him. Did you say something? asked Naruto curiously, all the while keeping his eyes on his smiling son. Haku asked, do you have a name decided for the prince? repeated Sakura, they saw the Kaiser lovingly staring at his son for a few moments, before looking back towards them with a sheepish smile on his face. He had even reverted to his traditional habit of scratching the back of his head showing how nervous he was, while firmly holding the infant with his other arm protectively. Yang. All three women blinked in surprise on hearing the simple name. They had expected something big or grand, but one look in the Kaiser's eyes was enough to show why the child was given that name. The light. Deciphered Haku, the sun. Thought Sakura happily, the fire. Thought Karinai proudly, the child was a symbol of the Kaiser's simplicity, his hope for the future, and the unending light which he wanted to shine over the Reich through their children for whose sake they had sacrificed everything and fought so hard. Young Uchiha. Said Naruto happily, Naruto was surprised when the entire room erupted into applause as everyone kneeled before him and his son, Haku sat straight in her bed and gave a respectful salute making the others follow her lead quickly. Sieg Kaiser Naruto, Sieg Prince Yang, cheered Haku, Sieg Kaiser Naruto, Sieg Prince Yang, cheered Kurinai happily, Sieg Kaiser Naruto, Sieg Prince Yang, repeated Sakura, one after another each and every person joined the celebration. It went to show even in the midst of darkness, there existed light. Now that the Reich was facing its darkest hour, 
Kami had gracefully delivered light into their lives instilling hope and the desire to survive in their hearts. On seeing so much respect, recognition, love for him and his son made the Kaiser tear up. He felt happier than ever as he affectionately cradled his son in his arms, receiving a bright smile in return. The boy was definitely living up to his name after all. Your father loves you very much. Whispered Naruto secretly, and gave a thankful nod to everyone. Naruto was just wiping away the happy tears from his eyes as he finished saying goodbye to his wife and son. Despite his desire to stay with them, there was still a war on and his people needed him. Now more than ever. Coming out of the operation theater, Kurinai had tightly grasped his hand offering support and a bright smile. You did good today. Congratulated Kurinai, I don't know why, but I love that child. How can I feel such an emotion when I've known him for just an hour? Asked Naruto curiously, receiving a knowing smile in return. One day you'll understand. You chose a good name. Said Kurinai happily, they looked into each other's eyes and saw the satisfaction among each other. However, their moment was broken when a frightened Anko ran towards them and quickly kneeled before the Kaiser. Kaiser. Area 20, said Anko nervously, what happened? Asked Naruto quickly, there are strange monsters attacking our people. The soldiers have been wiped out, reinforcements will take time to reach that area. By that time. Informed Anko gravely, Kurinai saw a menacing look arriving in Naruto's gaze, and felt his hand tightening in her grasp. Order Hinata to prepare our squad. We will personally eliminate those freaks. Commanded Naruto, yes, sir, replied Anko, and giving a quick smile to Kurinai she dashed away to accomplish her orders. Naruto turned towards his soon-to-be wife, as she gave him an understanding nod. No words were said, but they understood each other's feelings perfectly. I'll get Haku and Yang to safety. Then I'm coming to help you, hang on till then. Said Kurinai seriously, leaving no doubts for any protests. He merely smirked and started walking away. Who do you think I am? Naruto narrowed his eyes in suspicion, whether his eyes were deceiving him or a strange phenomenon had occurred in the sky. Despite the darkness of the night. The smoke that had been produced due to the destruction across the capital had accumulated in the sky. With the light of the moon shining on it, they were illuminating the light of a nearly perfect rainbow mass. Hey, what's that? asked one of his soldiers, well, it seems like a rainbow. But it's unusual seeing it at a time like this. Said another officer, apart from Hinata and Enko who were guarding his flanks, there were nearly 200 other capable soldiers marching together with him. While they were being cautious, the atmosphere was a little relaxed since they had the strong Kaiser with them. It is so beautiful. Said Hinata innocently, you still like rainbows, Gaki, teased Anko, making Hinata blush. HM, but this one falls among the most beautiful ones I've ever seen in my life. Said Hinata honestly but frowned when Naruto had a sharp look in his eyes. While it is beautiful and a symbol of nature's pride. Rainbows are also referred as a symbol for snakes. Said Naruto gravely, Enko sensed the hidden command the Kaiser had just given her. The years of training as a veteran ninja kicked in and she yelled at the top of her voice. Tetsudo. Fortunately, the Reich soldiers were much more disciplined and their resistance counterparts and were more prone to obey orders the moment they were issued. Quickly raising their shields, they covered each other just in time as a hail of kanai and shuriken rained down on them. Haksha Katen, yelled Hinata, deflecting a vast number of projectiles. The Kaiser merely stood in his spot, and an invisible wind deflected every weapon that would have killed him quickly. He narrowed his eyes dangerously when his eyes spotted something hideous. Entire streets covered in blood, the dead bodies of deceased Reich soldiers and civilians lying everywhere. Almost everyone had their guts ripped apart, these people were not killed but eaten alive. Many of his own younger soldiers puked on seeing the gruesome scene, even Hinata couldn't help it. A few moments later, growls were heard as several monstrous, Dark eyes opened in the dark alleys. 
Anko armed herself, as several monsters arrived and surrounded them from all sides. Except for being extremely ugly and having hideous human bodies, they all had one thing in common. The hidden cursed seals. Said Anko angrily. Her breath stopped when all of them charged towards her leader and soldiers, but before she or her men could move they saw Naruto's eyes closing and eyebrows twitching. Furious the Kaiser raised his right arm and twisted his fingers. Disappear, trash. Slash. To every Reich soldier's surprise, razor-sharp blades of wind sliced apart every cursed seal warrior into tiny pieces of meat. None of them either had the time to scream or have their eyes go wide in horror. They simply vanished from this planet in a flash. Looking towards Naruto's cold, neutral face Anko was shocked to see no change despite killing nearly 100 men in a flash. The Kaiser's in a really bad mood. Whispered Hinata worriedly, Anko. Said Naruto suddenly, yes, Kaiser. It seems today is the day you shall have your revenge. Anko Midarashi froze. A cold chill passed across her entire body on hearing those words, as if to prove the Kaiser's claim true a familiar, evil laugh echoed across the area as the sound of footsteps reached her ears. It's you. Said Anko bitterly, it's been a long time, Anko. A wickedly smiling Orochimaru appeared in front of them, rising from the ground itself like a zombie. His menacing dark, yellow snake-like eyes made many of the Reich soldiers take a step back. Brave or not, even they knew their abilities paled in comparison to the freak in front of them. So the snake finally returns. Remarked Naruto, gaining a disturbing chuckle in return. I apologize for my delay, main Kaiser. I simply didn't want to disappoint you when we meet again. Mocked Orochimaru making many of the prideful Reich soldiers growl. Naruto quickly raised his hand, halting his men from doing anything reckless. Oh, so you have an entire army of puppets now. You seem to have taken after me. Teased Orochimaru, is that why you got your ass kicked last time despite having an army of puppets? Despite being the famous snake Sanin, mocked Naruto, and smirked when Orochimaru narrowed his eyes dangerously. I underestimated you before, Naruto. Admitted Orochimaru, as Naruto raised one of his eyebrows in surprise. Oh, and what makes you think your chances are better this time? Asked Naruto curiously, and frowned on seeing the predator looking like it was appearing in that snake's eyes. I won't make the same mistakes again. I've come prepared this time. Promised Orochimaru. You stayed underground for four years. Why even bother coming up? Are you trying to aid the resistance? Asked Naruto curiously, but Orochimaru shook his finger as if advising a child. Oh, those fools are the biggest pawns in this game. As for why I'm here, I want to teach a brat like you a lesson. People like you are a bane to science and development of humanity. You're an obstacle to the path of complete knowledge. Said Orochimaru gleefully, as Enko grit her teeth, unable to believe that this freak was once her mentor. Oh, and does that involve experimenting brutally on humans? Killing them? Enslaving them, asked Naruto sarcastically, but Orochimaru waved his hand. Semantics. But enough of this debate, after eliminating you I will rule over this established nation. I'll put all your resources to good use. Declared Orochimaru wickedly, what makes you think that will allow that to happen? As long as we have the Kaiser with us, you or your lackeys can't do shit, snaky. Said Enko victoriously, receiving cheers from several of her soldiers. Naruto Kuen is stronger than you, Orochimaru. Said Hinata seriously, receiving a creepy smile in return. I don't doubt that at all. He's a super weapon made of the best raw materials, even the entire might of the ninja world couldn't defeat him. You wanna know, why? Dear Hinata-chan. Said Orochimaru creepily, the Hyuga heir didn't respond but felt an uneasy feeling in her gut, when the mad scientist spread his arms widely. It's because those fools searched for the Kaiser's weakness among the living. 
when his true vulnerable point lies among the dead. Hinted Orochimaru, and smirked on receiving that magnificent reaction from the brave Kaiser. Enko frowned when Naruto's fists clenched, and he shuddered for a moment. Orochimaru got a crazy look in his eyes, when he clasped his hands together and five coffins rose from the ground. I spent the last four years preparing for this. Your Kaiser is a strong warrior, but he has a weakness against certain people, the ones who he got killed. Said Orochimaru wickedly, the ones whom he couldn't save. Accused Orochimaru, the ones whose deaths he still holds himself responsible for. Finished Orochimaru, Hinata and several Reich soldiers gasped in shock when the Kaiser stumbled backwards, a terrified look appeared in his once defiant eyes as he opened the door to the coffins. Anko shivered in fear when the first two people stepped outside. A few of the Reich soldiers who were former Kanoha shinobi took a few steps back when the tall figures of Hashirama Senju and Tobarama Senju appeared before them. Both great warriors seemed to be curiously observing the small army in front of them, and most importantly the blonde boy who looked like an important leader. But Naruto's gaze was not fixed on them, but rather on the last three coffins whose occupants slowly stepped outside, instantly stopping Naruto's heart. The first two of them recognized him instantly and gave him happy smiles, which had their surprise hidden in them on seeing his new look. It's been a while, Naru. Said Shin, you've gotten so old, Naruto. Teased Sai, and frowned on seeing how terrified Naruto was. Orochimaru almost felt himself orgasm as the last person stepped outside the coffin. Despite being the smallest and most innocent among the warriors, the person had the most devastating effect on the mighty Kaiser as he collapsed on his knees. His entire body trembled, even as tears fell from his eyes. Yes. That's the look, fear, despair, face your darkest past. Repent for your crimes, main Kaiser, yelled Orochimaru madly, the youngest person blinked a few times trying to recognize the trembling man. Memories of that night instantly kicked in, resulting in raising of an arm. Captain Naruto? Naruto's heart shattered into millions of tiny pieces on hearing that voice. The one he heard every night, the one he longed to hear and the one whom he missed the most. Oblivious to the panic among his comrades, or to the curious looks from the Hokages, or the surprised expression of his best friends he said the name of the person for whom Valkyrie had started, for whose death the entire shinobi world had burned, villages and nations had been destroyed. And the reason behind the rise of the Reich and his elevation as the Kaiser of Humanity. Ray. Shino had a neutral expression on his face as his eyes spotted something far away. Beside him, Niji activated his Byakugan and turned towards him with a serious look in his eyes. There is a man holding the Reich holy symbol on that hilltop. Confirmed Niji, eliciting a smile from his leader. They're here. Are you sure? asked Niji skeptically, they're here. Repeated Shino, frowning, Niji decided to investigate further, and was just about to increase the range of his famed dojitsu to confirm his leader's prediction. But before that could happen, the entire ground shook violently. The six thousand soldiers of the Black Lancers felt the tremors, and a few moments later they saw the flag of the Golden Eagle flying in the sky. A man seated atop a hawk was carrying the national flag, and looking into their leader's eyes it seemed the Aburame knew who it was. And then they saw something which men rarely saw in their entire lifetimes. With the holy symbol of the Reich swastika raised at the front an army of thousands of disciplined, united soldiers marched towards them. With each step they took, the ground shivered. It was as if nature itself was preparing to face the wrath of the strongest nation humanity had ever formed. Shino took a deep breath, when he saw each Reich soldier dressed in their traditional uniform and armor, their faces covered by death masks, which instantly made several of his own soldiers take a step back. And with good reason. While a small contingent of his men that had stayed with him in his last stand had seen the unending resistance army, the majority of his soldiers were seeing an army like this for the first time. The soldiers marching towards them while few in numbers than the resistance, had an aura around them that made Shino shiver. Through them, 
he could see the mighty Kaiser's gaze landing on them. They were Naruto's wrath, and the hope of the Reich. He couldn't help but smirk when the man who was carrying the Reich national flag in the air, jumped down. To the horror of the Black Lancers, that lone soldier fell quickly and crashed with a resounding thud sending dust and debris everywhere. When their vision cleared, most of them took a step back when they saw the Gale Wolf standing in front of them. Tall and strong. The warrior who was said to be the fastest man in the current world, the one whose blitzkrieg attacks could tear apart even the mightiest armies, the only other person other than the Kaiser who slayed a Kage in battle. With a firm stab the national flag of the Reich was marked on the ground, as the cold, ferocious eyes of Sasuke Uchiha glared at each and every Black Lancer. Following their army commander, the Reich army soon appeared behind him. And in them Shino could see the strong figures of Sabaka no Gara, Tsunade Senju, Sakura Haruno and Kakashi Hitaki. The appearance of his former sensei did surprise Shino, as both men gave each other nods. With firm footsteps, both Kakashi and Shino approached each other and after a brief pause the former student kneeled before his master. 45,678. Kakashi was not offended even when Shino looked at all of them in shock. He couldn't blame the boy for that as well, since it would be hard for anyone to believe that the kingdom that had united humanity under one banner had only this much strength to defend herself. Are these all the men you have for this war? asked Niji worriedly, yes. There are a few thousand men in the capital, but they are dealing with a problem of their own. We do have a strong military police force, but they are not combat trained soldiers. Besides, we need them to maintain order within the Reich in this crucial hour. Said Kakashi frankly, the Kaiser, asked Niji, he'll be arriving shortly. Until then we are to hold these lines, possibly without engaging the enemy. These are the clear orders from the Kaiser. Stated Kakashi, the enemy has nearly 150,000 strong forces. From our latest reports, they are being personally led by the Hokage, Reikage, Jiraiya and the entire resistance leadership. They have committed everything, even if we add my 6,000 soldiers to your army. The Reich will only have 51,000 soldiers to defend. We will be outnumbered three, one, warned Shino, making Sasuke frown. Don't compare my warriors to those weak thugs of the resistance. We can hold the line. Said Sasuke confidently, I don't doubt your confidence or the ability of your soldiers. I have faced them myself and I cannot dispute the fact that they are better fighters. But the fact is, this will turn out into a war of attrition and sooner or later our troops will get tired, wounded, low on morale and that will be the moment of our fall. While courage is necessary for winning a war, we cannot abandon hard facts. Argued Shino, and Shikamaru may not look much of a fighter, but he's one of the best tacticians in the resistance. With him guiding the army, it won't be so easy to stop them or even defeat them. Warn Niji, all eyes turned towards Kakashi who was currently staring at an old photograph of the graduating Kanoha 12 along with their senseis. Just who could have thought that just a few years later, these children will be fighting each other on opposite sides despite being born and raised under the same flag? Why did you not raise a larger army? Recruit more young men and women? You could have drafted thousands for the cause by the Kaiser's order. The Reich certainly has the resources and power to do all of that. Argued Shino, and was surprised when Tsunade, who had silently observed the conversation, stepped forward. Kakashi's gaze was still lingering over that photograph, so the second in command decided to step up to answer that question. The lives of our children are far too precious to be callously wasted like that. Haven't you learned anything from history, Shino? The true power of a nation does not lie in the military, but rather in its culture, its economy, its unity. The resistance is fighting for a long gone past but every Reich soldier that has arrived today has a future to fight for. All of them are volunteers who willingly fight for their nation till the end. When the Reich was formed, the Kaiser's first objective was to give a new future to its people. We invested the majority of our resources in organizing our territories, developing trade, industry, transportation, commerce, reducing poverty, 
generating employment, and increasing education opportunities for everyone. With such goals, we were able to improve the lives of our people much better than the combined powers of the ninja villages. And in any era, the military is an institution whose existence while being necessary can also be the cause for the fall of a nation. If a nation continues to increase its armed forces capacity, while ignoring the citizens the balance will be shattered. More than that, the nation will definitely search for conflicts to exercise its power in the name of justice. That would lead to more wars and millions of young boys and girls will die for nothing. Besides, if you forcefully draft people in the military it creates a hole within the society. If left unchecked, the military eats into the nation like a parasite sucking everything good from it. Only wield a power which you have the capability to handle, the reason the shinobi world failed was because they couldn't control their military forces and seeked out wars. You can see how that ended. Scolded Tsunade harshly, Shino was stunned by her words, for the first time in his life he found himself unable to argue against such a just reason. You truly have so many good subordinates, Naruto. This Reich will flourish because of their vast knowledge and experience. Thought Shino, you cannot survive in a head-on fight with that monstrous resistance army. Nothing can change that fact. Said Niji frustratedly, and gulped when Sasuke grabbed his collar. Looking into the dark eyes of the Reich army commander, made a cold shiver pass through the Hyuga's heart. We are merely the first line of defenders of this nation. Before we die, more than half of the resistance would be wiped out. I can assure you that, and when those fools try to take over our nation after murdering our army, the fury of the Reich will descend upon them. The soldiers who will die here have families back home, people who will destroy every resistance soldier till the last man. To take the Reich would not only spell the end of the resistance but that of humanity as well. The Reich will fight till our last citizen falls. Even if the resistance manages to kill us all, we still have the Kaiser. As long as he lives, there will be no victory for the resistance. Promised Sasuke, the tension in the room was extremely high as each and every member looked at each other wearily. I don't think such drastic measures would need to be taken just yet. Said Sakura honestly, why do you say that? Asked Niji curiously, the Kaiser anticipated such an invasion coming someday, while being an anti-war leader he still made sure that our nation had enough defensive measures to protect herself. Kakashi, will you please? Requested Sakura, earning a sad nod from the copy ninja who had fought wars all his life. Nobody in the room other than Tsunade could possibly understand the pain he was suffering right now. Losing his father, his best friends, his teachers, and so many of his comrades made him despite war from the bottom of his heart. He had been so happy when Naruto gave him a peaceful life free from conflict, by making him a governor. The job was demanding and tedious, but it allowed him a chance to improve lives rather than destroy them. But now he was back again fighting another war. It made him wonder as to just when this would stop, couldn't people understand? Minato-sensei, pray to Kami and please let this be the last war I ever see in my life. I don't want my son to grow up in such madness. Thought Kakashi sadly, looking into the eyes of all of them, he could see they were hoping he would lead them until the Kaiser arrived. Hataki Kakashi knew what that meant clearly, again through his hands thousands of innocent young men and women would die. It didn't matter to him whether they would be resistance or Reich, but the fact that so many people would lose their lives based on his choices made him extremely sad. He could only imagine the burden Naruto had carried over his young shoulders all his life, and still did to this day. Regardless of everything, Naruto needed him. And he would not fail him in this crucial hour, the time for regrets would come later. Follow me. That was all he said and walked out of the makeshift war room, he didn't even wait for the others because they were right behind him. Sasuke, Sakura and Tsunade already knew what he was going to do but the others needed to see it for themselves. The Shiva Fields, the chosen battlefield was the place the universe would witness the biggest war humanity had ever waged among itself. Lying behind the Saratobi Fortress, 
the entire area was nothing more than grassy fields and rocks. It provided a straight road deep into the heart of the Reich, and all of them were here to prevent that from happening. May I ask why you didn't keep Saratobi Fortress as your base of operations? Why give it to the enemy and try to fight in such open lands when you are clearly outnumbered? asked Shino skeptically, making Kakashi smile. You're a good warrior, Shino, but you still have a lot left to learn. Where you see open lands, I see an impregnable defense line that will defend this Reich. Said Kakashi sagely, I don't understand. No more words came out of Shino's mouth, when Kakashi raised his hand receiving nods from Karen and Suijetsu in return. The Reich leaders smirked and behind them the ground trembled violently as Karen performed a hand seal. Biting her thumb, the redhead slammed her palm on the ground. Her powerful chakra coursed through the lands, as an unending wall started rising from the ground, covering each and every boundary of the Shiva fields, it completely separated the Reich territories from the Saratobi fortress. And it continued to rise higher and higher. 30 feet. 50 feet. 80 feet. 100 feet. 120 feet. Niji could only marvel at the magnificent structure in front of him. His Byakugan couldn't even look past this monstrous wall, there was something inside this thing that even prevented his all-seeing eyes from looking beyond. A wall? That's your answer? It may be high, but we're dealing with ninjas. Said Shino disappointedly, then try crossing this wall, you dumb fool. Scolded Karen, clearly offended by the sheer disrespect this man had shown towards her work of the past four years. Shino frowned, but decided to test her claim regardless. Quickly charging towards the wall, he simply channeled Chakra towards his feet hoping to scale the structure with quick speed. The moment he made first contact with the wall, he instantly realized his blunder. Instead of his feet sticking to the wall, a violent shock passed through his entire body flinging him several feet away where he crashed roughly. Blood trickled down his face, as Karen adjusted her glasses with a smirk adorning on her lips. He could see the respectful looks and praises the Reich leaders were showering on this girl. He knew that no ordinary human could build such a thing, even the most powerful Uchiha and Senju clans didn't have the capability of building such defenses. But there was one clan. A small group of fighters who held their own against the power of three powerful hidden villages. A clan who nearly wiped out Kyumo, IWA, and Kiri's armies before their fall. If they had received just a little help from their allies, today that clan could have been the most powerful force in the world. The Uzumaki still live. Thought Shino in shock, now that he thought about it. Naruto's birth records also listed his surname as Uzumaki long before he became a Hataki, then an Uchiha. It was karmic justice at its best, that the ninja world who destroyed the most knowledgeable clan was on its deathbed today due to survivors of the same clan. No ninja will be able to scale this wall. The chakra which they are so proud of will become their curse, this wall is made up of special chakra absorbing stones which we unearthed on capturing Iron Country. The samurai were more than happy to give them to us in return for mercy and a chance to live within the Reich. When a ninja touches this wall, it will absorb a portion of his chakra and forcefully return it back to him through a violent shock. No human can scale this wall, either with or without chakra. I promise you that. Said Karen proudly, Shino saw hundreds of sharp Reich archers taking positions on top of the walls, if that were not enough he also saw new machines being mounted upwards. Only Kami knew what those things were. A few toys I devised over the years. They're quite deadly. Boasted Karen, the former student of Orochimaru. Sensing the doubts vanishing from Shino and Niji's hearts, Kakashi stepped forward and looked them straight in the eye. If gods forbid, the ninjas do manage to get behind these walls they will have to face the entire Reich army. That won't happen anytime soon and certainly not without substantial losses, till then the Kaiser would have arrived. Do I need to tell you how destructive Naruto is when he gets pissed? asked Kakashi, a smirk adoring his lips. Shino shivered on remembering that day of the assassination. 
Naruto had brutally murdered the Rakage along with Yujito and Killer B, two of the strongest Jinchuriki ever known. He would have nearly killed every resistance fighter that day, if Shino hadn't stabbed him in the back. If there was ever a man whom Shino Aburame never wanted to face again in combat, then it was the Kaiser. And no force in the world was more dangerous than a furious Naruto Uchiha. God save the fool who does make that stupid mistake. An eerie silence prevailed in Area 20 of the Reich capital, except for the laugh of a mad San Nin. Orochimaru had a satisfied smile on his face as he saw the raw fear, panic spreading among the Reich forces. The soldiers of the once strong nation were on the verge of disarray on seeing their leader and strongest fighter down on his knees. Tears trickled down Naruto's cheeks, further confusing the newly revived people. Sai curiously looked towards the person who had made Naruto cry, and gasped in shock on recognizing that little girl from all those years ago. Except for being Kanoha Shinobi, he, Shin and the Senju brothers had one thing in common. They were all dead. And if Rei was standing beside them, it meant that she was deceased too. Was Naruto not able to save her that night? Oh Kami! Said Sai in shock, what's wrong, Sai? Why is Naruto crying and dressed in that strange outfit? Asked Shin curiously, the former root Umbu closed his eyes as he realized just what might have happened after his death. Rei was the last straw that had tied Naruto to the ninja world, and if she was gone too then his friend would have only one way left. A world of victors, a world of peace, a world of love, I will create that world, Sai. For Shin, you, all of us. The promise which Naruto made all those years ago had finally been fulfilled. Although, Sai really didn't want Naruto to go through that pain again. And thus, despite Shin's questions he wordlessly walked towards the trembling Kaiser. Orochimaru frowned and made a hand seal, making Sai stop instantly. However the smirk disappeared from the Sanin's face when after a rough struggle, the former root Umbu started walking again at a much slower pace. What? thought Orochimaru in shock, why the hell was this boy not obeying his commands? Beside him Tobarama also marveled at this rare sight, never before in his life had he seen someone overcome his invincible jutsu. He could see Sai's movements were getting slower and slower, the boy was losing control. Looking towards Orochimaru, the snake Sanin had clasped both his hands together and was clearly giving it his all to stop the boy. Enko quickly got in front of her kaiser, hell-bent on protecting the shaken man. However, her fears turned out to be unwarranted when Sai collapsed on his knees and had a strained expression in his eyes which were fluctuating rapidly. The boy was definitely fighting even as he crawled towards his friend. Naruto's eyes widened on seeing this, and he quickly dashed towards his friend. Cradling Sai's trembling form in his lap, he grasped the boy's hand. Sai. I," said Naruto hesitantly, receiving a strained smile in return. Protect, your, dream. Hinata was surprised when her kaiser stopped trembling, the fear and guilt vanished from Naruto's eyes as both friends exchanged happy smiles. Whatever happens, I will free you. I promise you this. Said Naruto seriously, making Sai smile. Wake, me, up, when, this, is over. With those words, the light disappeared from Sai's eyes. His body went still as a cruel smile appeared on Orochimaru's lips. His happiness didn't last when Naruto made a hand seal encasing Sai's body in a wooden coffin, much to the Senju brother's shock. Slapping a seal on the coffin Naruto got back on his feet. In a rare move which surprised everyone, Naruto took out his own royal coat bearing the symbol of the golden eagle on the back. Gently placing it on the surface of the coffin, he gave a full salute to his best friend. Except for Shin, nobody could understand what had happened. The elder root Umbu smiled and followed Naruto by giving a firm salute, as Naruto gave him a tearful smile and an acknowledging nod. No words were necessary to be said between them, since the unsaid message had been already delivered. Even the confused Reich soldiers followed their leader, by giving salutes to the boy who probably saved the Reich just now. 
Naruto's gaze lingered over Rei for a few moments, suppressing his troubled emotions he channeled all his feelings into one thing. Rage. Orochimaru took a step back, when Naruto glared at him murderously. The Kaiser's man Gekyo came to life, as he gave the Sanmin the most furious glare anyone had ever seen. You're dead. Orochimaru had a baffled expression on his pale face on watching one of his most important Edo Tensei being sealed just like that, this jutsu was said to be invincible and he had spent years trying to make sure that there were no loopholes that could be used against him. While Sai may not have been strong enough to fight with the Kaiser, that boy could have been used as a shield because Naruto wouldn't lay a hand on his friend. He could have easily used the Senju brothers to end the Kaiser. And looking into those cold, furious eyes made him remember Minato Namikaze. Both father and son were so similar not just in looks but in personalities as well. Mokutan. Said Tobarama in shock, Who are you, boy? asked Hashirama curiously, receiving a straight gaze from Naruto himself. The heir to Hashiman, descendant of Izuna Uchiha, and son of Minato Namikaze the Yandame Hokage, and most of all the Shodame Kaiser of the Reich. The invaders had varied shocked expressions on their faces, each dealing with a surprising revelation of their own. Hashiman? That Hashiman? And Izuna's descendant that means he's Madara's. Thought Hashirama in horror, in that moment itself the older Senju felt the face of his dead best friend glaring at him victoriously from the afterlife. Yandame Hokage's son, thought Tobarama in surprise, just how many Hokages had reigned over Kanoha? Kaiser, thought Shin in shock. Beside him Rei didn't understand the meaning of the word but judging from the terrified expression in the older men's eyes it was certainly not something good. The Sanmin saw the look in the Senju brother's eyes and instantly decided to use the situation to his benefit. Kami, he needed something now that his original plan of killing an emotionally broken Naruto had gone haywire. Yes, this brat here is not just those things. He's also the murderer of Hiruzen Sarutobi, the destroyer of Kanoha, Fire Nation. Hashirama, Tobarama, don't be fooled by his young, innocent face. He's the fascist kaiser who destroyed the shinobi world, and tyrannically rules over the world now. Said Orochimaru passionately. Enko nearly pissed her pants when Hashirama's gentle smile disappeared only to be replaced by an ice-cold glare. You killed Saru? Asked Hashirama in despair, destroyed my Kanoha? You Uchiha brat, I will end you right here, yelled Tobarama murderously, Shin and Rei were sent crashing away by a violent shockwave as the Naidame's Hokage's body got covered in fierce chakra waves. The murderous look in his eyes promised an unending mass murder, and a second later he charged. This time Anko and every Reich soldier were sent sailing away as Naruto raised his chakra, instantly stopping the bloodthirsty Naidame Hokage and flinging him back to where he charged from. An equally cold look was visible in Naruto's eyes as he glared at Tobarama. Shut the fuck up, you racist thug, yelled Naruto furiously, the Naidame were stunned for a moment at being pushed back so fiercely, only two people in the world had ever managed that feat one was his own elder brother standing beside him, and the other. It was a bad omen to even whisper that man's name, and looking at this boy made him experience that dark feeling again. Unknown to the two furious leaders, their chakras had risen to extreme levels. Every Reich soldier was on the verge of dying from heart attack, even the revived Edo Tensei Rei and Shin had their bodies cracking, while they gritted their teeth in pain. In a move which surprised Tobarama, his brother placed a hand on his shoulder stopping the flow of chakra. Anija, elder brother, what the hell are you doing? demanded Tobarama, eyes glaring daggers at the solemn Senju. Toby, don't harm young children in your rage. Advised Hashirama, pointing towards a panting ray. Tobarama flinched for a second, Naruto's own eyes widened in shame and horror on seeing the unbearable pain his own soldiers, Shin and Rei were in. Instantly appearing beside the fallen Edo Tensei he looked each of them straight in the eye. His hands trembled as he touched Rei's forehead, making her look at him with those curious eyes. Naruto. Stop, us, before, it's, too, late. Insisted a struggling Shin, who
whose eyes were losing their color. The Kaiser nearly panicked when his daughter bit her lip as her small eyes started flickering. His dark gaze landed on a hiding Orochimaru who was quickly stealing their consciousness away. Not this time, you freak. Cursed Naruto, quickly placing his hand on Rei and Shin's head, he encased their bodies in wooden coffins like Sai and slapped a seal on the surface. Before either of them succumbed to the darkness, Naruto gave each of them a promising smile. Rest for now. I will save you this time said Naruto seriously, a hopeful smile arriving on his lips. Hashirama relaxed on seeing their enemy saving those two young children. The man calling himself Kaiser definitely had a connection to the revived young children. More than that, Hashirama saw a clear reflection of Madara in Naruto when the boy looked at the little girl. The Kaiser definitely had the same love for her, just as Madara had for Izuna. Probably even more. Tobarama snorted in disgust when Orochimaru cursed at the top of his lungs, much to Anko's pleasure. The Naidame saw the Kaiser summon a few of his soldiers who quickly carried away the coffins to safety, rejoining them with the one Sai was placed in. Protect them at all costs. They mean everything to me. Said Naruto fiercely, receiving a firm nod from Anko. We'll protect them with our lives. But main Kaiser, wouldn't that leave you alone against those three? Said Enko worriedly, as Naruto placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. This is a battle I must fight on my own. But before that. Said Naruto mysteriously, Enko quickly understood the end of their discussion as Naruto turned to face Hashirama, as she quickly made a hasty retreat with Reich soldiers taking with them the three precious coffins which held the Kaiser's only weaknesses. She had nearly seen the fall of Naruto, and would rather die than watching something like that again. Revenge could wait for now, these three coffins were the most precious thing in the world for her and the soldiers around her. I wish to speak with you. Said Hashirama flatly, Anija. Protested Tobarama, only to be silenced by a dark glare in return. Enough of this. Attack him now. Commanded Orochimaru and made a hand seal. Tobarama's eyes went blank and he moved forward to attack Naruto only to be stopped as vines erupted from the ground wrapping themselves around his body. Naidame was instantly immobilized for good. Hashirama instantly appeared in front of a terrified Orochimaru with blinding speed, and in that moment the Sanin realized why this man was called a kami. Naruto openly gawked in shock when a tight slap landed on Kanon's cheek, courtesy of a pissed-off Hashirama. The impact was horrible, as Orochimaru's entire neck twisted round and round at unnatural angles. It was a rare sight even for the Kaiser to watch Orochimaru fly away into several walls like a fly, making him gulp. Nobody messes with my brother, but me. Said Hashirama sharply, if Orochimaru had been a normal human he would be dead by now but the man was a walking experimental shop who had tweaked his body more than any time a person could count. So for now Naruto had to settle for watching stars dancing in the man's eyes. Naruto, be careful. This guy may look like a goofy idiot, but he kicked both mine and Madara's asses together, even when we were using all our powers. Warned Kurama, honestly quite nervous on facing this tree hugger again after so many decades. The Kaiser did not miss the hidden fear in his Biju's voice. If something scared the mighty Kyubi, then it was a great concern to him. And just watching a Sanin like Orochimaru being swapped away like a common fly made him acknowledge the power of this man standing before him. The tension in the air was extremely high, only to be broken down as Hashirama laughed while staring at his right hand. Ma, I went a little overboard. What do you say? asked Hashirama jovially, and laughed more when Naruto's face palmed on the ground. What the hell are you, old man, asked Naruto in disbelief, till this day he had believed that Minato and he himself were the goofy, silly ones. But apparently the strongest Hokage was even a bigger fool than them. You're Kyuubi's Jinchuriki. And an Uzumaki too. Said Hashirama flatly, surprising Naruto further. How do you dash? Well, I am the Shodame. 
boasted Hashirama harmlessly, eliciting a faint smile from the Kaiser. Then why are you not attacking me like your brother? Everything Orochimaru said was true, except for me being a tyrant. Clarified Naruto, and saw the smile vanishing from Hashirama's face. An immense pain was visible in the old man's eyes as he looked towards the Kaiser. Kanoha is truly gone? Sarutu, asked Hashirama sadly, yes. Why? Hashirama never flinched even when Naruto looked him straight in the eye, a feat which only a few people could manage when facing the mighty Kaiser. Will knowing the reason change anything? I know a loyal ninja when I see one. You're an honorable man, Hashirama. But you're too naive, just like my past self. Said Naruto bitterly, making the Hokage smile. You're so much like him, it's quite scary. Replied Hashirama kindly, huh? Asked Naruto in confusion, you remind me of Madara. Naruto's gaze softened on hearing that, and judging from the genuine look in the man's eyes the Kaiser could clearly see that those emotions were real. Sighing, he massaged his forehead. You're annoying, Hashirama. You know that right? Asked Naruto irritatedly. But there was no hostility or bitterness in his voice. Madara once told me that a day would come when Kanoha would fall along with the shinobi world. I didn't believe him back then, but looking at this changed world and at you makes me rethink my past decisions. I want to know why you did what you did. Insisted Hashirama, and surprisingly received a hateful glare in return. Why? Just so you can pass on your divine judgment on me like your racist brother? Your village and your shinobi system destroyed my Uzumaki and Uchiha clans, killed my parents, my friends, my comrades, my daughter. Said Naruto bitterly, Hashirama lowered his head on hearing so much sad news, he could easily feel the pain and anger in Naruto's voice. The Uchiha and Uzumaki were gone, that was something Hashirama never wanted to hear. He couldn't even fathom the devastating effect the remaining tragedies would have had on this boy. And somewhere deep down, he felt a little guilty since the ninja world was his creation. I am not like Tobarama. I may not be able to accept what you did, but before I make my decision I want to hear your story. Maybe it will change things, maybe it won't. But as a leader yourself, please grant me a favor by telling me the unbiased truth. I built the ninja world, Kanoha, on the bones of my friends and families. Just like you I had a dream and had to suffer a lot for it. So dash. Hashirama didn't have to say anything else as Naruto closed his eyes. Taking a deep breath, he looked the man straight in the eye. Very well. What do you want to know? Asked Naruto patiently, everything. Kakashi remained calm as ice even as his eyes bore witness to the largest invasion force he had ever seen in his entire life. Standing on top of the Yuzu wall, he felt the wild winds brush against his body. He was actually surprised that Naruto named this wall after the village of his deceased clan, and as a tribute to his mother. From a personal point of view, Naruto had surprised him again since the Kaiser had never known the Uzumaki clan as they had died before he was even born. He didn't even know his mother as a person, and resented her for a good half of his life. And then he goes and names the greatest creation in the Reich after the clan and a mother whom he barely had a formidable connection with. But from a strategic point of view, he could see the significance of this name. The Uzumaki clan defended their village against the combined armies of three great villages. Their fight was considered one of the best defensive struggles in the history of the shinobi world. Perhaps the Kaiser had anticipated such a situation and had named this wall Yuzu to give strength to his people in the need of our. Although, Kakashi dearly hoped the final outcome was completely opposite from that of the past. He had received information from his scouts that the first wave was being led by the Rakich himself. Derui was the leader's name, and he was the right-hand man of the former Rakich. He was a skilled fighter and leader, and had participated in that assassination attempt on the Kaiser. Seems like Kumo brutes are really overconfident about their victory. Said Sasuke distastefully, well, 
We did give them the Sarutobi fortress on a silver platter without any fight. They outnumber us, and probably know that our capital is under attack. Their morale would be high assuming that we would be dismayed and not offer a good resistance. Explained Gar tactfully, but still, attacking a defensive wall as high as this with just 25,000 ninjas is rather reckless. Don't you think so? asked Tsunade curiously, as Niji just confirmed their battle strength to her. They are being cautious, Shikamaru is a far better commander than I thought him to be. Said Kakashi silently. Shino who was silently observing the debate could nod in approval as their supreme commander's analysis matched with the type of leader that Nara was. If Derui had been the supreme commander, then this small force wouldn't be attacking them. This attack is meant to test us. The men of the Nara clan were masters in strategic retreats, they were far more skilled in hit and run attacks than a full-scale assault. Perhaps, Shikamaru feels that we have not shown all our cards. So instead of sending his entire army, he risks only a small portion of his soldiers. To make us believe that this is a real attack, he lets the rakage lead. This way he satisfies the eager Kyumo soldiers who are itching for bloodshed and keeps the rakage firmly under his thumb. If they win, the rakage will get the credit for victory in battle, but the real credit for tactics would go to Shikamaru. But if the rakage loses, then the entire responsibility for the loss of lives and demoralizing the resistance army falls on Darui. He would lose face. And then Shikamaru will achieve complete control over the army which he shares with the rakage right now. Explained Kakashi in great detail, the others could only marvel at the detailed analysis their leader had made, such skill could only come from years of battlefield experience. And Kakashi was one of the best ninjas in the history of the shinobi world. Only he could remain calm like this, and make correct judgment. The Kaiser had definitely chosen a good leader for his entire army. Sasuke was too emotional, Tsunade was a good medic but not a great battle commander. Gara was a good fighter but had lost confidence since his last defeat, Shino was not trustworthy for obvious reasons. That only left Kakashi a veteran of a great ninja war, an ex black ops and a skilled jounin with a decade full of commendable service record. Kami showed mercy on us. If we had attacked right after capturing Sarutobi Fortress, this battlefield would have been the final grave of mine and the Black Lancers. The Reich wouldn't even have needed Kakashi to command, the Yuzu Wall itself would have slaughtered us. My gamble to side with the Reich saved my life and those of the surrendering resistant civilians and the Black Lancers. Thought Shino in relief, Kakashi remained silent for a few moments, his eyes steadily observing the resistance force that had started appearing on the faraway horizon. Within an hour or less, they would be at his doorstep. One of the greatest advantages of the Yuzu Wall was the fact that there was only one gate of entry, and it was secretly camouflaged within the wall stones. Even the Byakugan couldn't detect it, so it was completely invisible to the naked human eye. Kakashi intended to use this advantage to the fullest. I need to preserve my trump cards for the real fight. Shikamaru will definitely be observing the battle from somewhere, trying to calculate the firing range of my archers, time for reloading, and the strength of the wall. The more information he gains, the lesser our chances of victory in the next battle. I need to hold it long enough for Naruto to arrive. Thought Kakashi seriously, the strategy that came to his mind was extremely risky, borderline suicidal. But if executed successfully, it could accomplish his goals. The burden of command weighed heavy on him, but for the sake of the Reich he had to take the risk. Here's the plan. Shikamar Nara, dressed in his Hokage robes could be seen crudely observing his marching army that was approaching the rather high wall formed by the Reich. He had to admit, the tactic was strange. This was certainly a new kind of warfare, which he was unfamiliar with. His reports indicated that Kakashi was the enemy commander, and added that man's vast battlefield experience with this unknown wall. The scenario was disturbing to say the least. Shikamaru, are you sure that Derui can handle it? asked Ino hesitantly, who was serving as his adjutant and communication officer. Perhaps, we must wait and observe. 
replied the supreme resistance commander, he didn't know why but an uneasy feeling had started forming in his gut since the past few minutes, while it could be attributed to battle anxiety since any minute now his soldiers would start their first assault on the Reich mainlands. But there was something else. His fears turned out to be true, when Eno's face went pale as a ghost. Her lips quivered several times trying to say something but failed miserably. What is it? asked Shikamaru impatiently, the base camp is being attacked. Said Eno hesitantly, what? How the hell did they get behind us? Didn't we clear every area of Reich soldiers? Every one of them should be hiding behind that wall. Said Shikamaru in surprise, I don't know, Shikamaru. But Gail Wolf is leading the attack. Informed Eno, even though she found it hard to believe that the Reich Army's battlefield commander was himself leading the attack. Enemy strength, asked Shikamaru worriedly, Sasuke is a Kage-level ninja, Kakashi would definitely send a mad dog like him to destroy our supplies and weapons cache. It would severely cripple our fighting chances, or he could kill our medical ninja thereby increasing our casualties rates due to lack of doctors. Or. Thought Shikamaru in quick succession, his logical mind coming up with even worse scenarios moment after moment. Reports are still coming in, but so far, hundreds of enemy soldiers are attacking us. Said Ino gravely, making Shikamaru grit his teeth. Even if he has few soldiers to fight, none of my warriors except Jiraiya could match Sasuke in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Since Jiraiya is on a scouting mission, the junior commanders would panic on seeing Sasuke's blitzkrieg attacks. I cannot let that happen. Thought Shikamaru quickly, he cursed himself for letting Jiraiya go on a scouting mission trying to find a secret passage that could let them infiltrate the Reich without winning the wall. The Toad Sage was skilled in infiltration, and Shikamaru really hoped that man came back with something for him. Ino, order our forces to reorganize their formation. Attack the enemy together, Kage-level shinobi or not even Sasuke cannot battle thousands of ninjas in a straight-up fight. Hold the line, till I arrive and take command. If we get Sasuke, it will be a severe blow to the enemy. Ordered Shikamaru, yes, Hokage-sama. Replied Ino, and instantly started working to convey his orders. Shikamaru gave one last glance towards the resistance force that was about to battle against Kakashi, and made a silent prayer for their success. Darui, be careful. Don't be reckless. Thought Shikamaru. Kakashi had his eyes closed, silently feeling the cool breeze hit his skin. He could feel the tremors across the battlefield as the enemy was inching closer and closer. He smiled when Matsuri came running towards him, the communications officer quickly relayed her report to him. I hope this gamble pays off. Sasuke will be alright. Said Kakashi seriously, Kakashi, the enemy has started charging towards us. They'll reach the wall in two minutes. Informed Tsunade urgently, they're in the range of our archers. Should we start our counterattack? Asked Gara seriously, wait. The officers were tense but the relaxed tone in which Kakashi gave his command made them obey him instantly. This was a man with a plan, and they had to believe in him. Sir, enemy forces 800 meters and closing in. Kakashi narrowed his eyes as thousands of Kyumo ninja bravely charged towards the wall. A few seconds later he received another report stating the accomplishment of the next phase of the operation, 600 meters. 500 meters, 400 meters. Hundreds of archers raised their bows, as Kakashi raised his hand while the enemy continued their quick charge. Gara had his hand placed on a button, waiting to press it the moment given the command to do so. Release the trap, now, yelled Kakashi, thrusting his right hand towards the enemy. Gara didn't waste any time and pressed the button in his hand, the very next second the entire backward area of the battlefield crumbled. The fake surface collapsed, as a deadly trench came alive. Hundreds of resistance fighters in the rear fell straight into the trap, where hundreds of spikes awaited to meet them. Cries erupted everywhere, showers of blood. Flesh and guts blasted instantly ending the lives of hundreds of humans. 
The entire rear guard of the resistance collapsed since the trench continued expanding for hundreds of meters. The artificial pillars that had held the hollow ground were blown away by a set of explosives attached to them, which went off when Gara pressed the button. The effect was deadly as the charging enemy instantly halted their advance abruptly. The rakage could only stare in horror as the trench became wider and wider. His army could not retreat now since the escape was cut off by a monstrous trench full of spikes ready to impale them. Even for ninjas jumping across a trench which was hundreds of meters long was an impossible feat that only left. Derui angrily stared at the Reich soldiers, and furiously raised his hands gathering the attention of his remaining soldiers. Charge! By the time the order was given to the shaken resistance soldiers, several smoke bombs had already been fired all over the battlefield. Even then the resistance didn't waver and madly dashed to scale the wall, with the intent of making the enemy pay in blood. Not on my watch. Thought Gara seriously, as he raised his hand. Dotan, Yomi Numa, Swamp of the Underworld. The area near the walls turned into a muddy swamp, several front-line units of the resistance fell right into the trap. The remaining stopped instantly, clearly not willing to get themselves trapped. Big mistake. Let it be known, that taking out a target from high altitude in the midst of battle can be extremely difficult. A moving target only decreases the chances of scoring a hit, even the wind could displace the aim of archers by a slight margin. But since the resistance forces had to abruptly stop, they were nothing more than, sitting ducks. Tsunade quickly stepped forward, eyes shining with fierce feminine fury as she narrowed her gaze on the trapped enemy who could neither advance or retreat since both ways had been cut off. Main archers, short bursts of three. Fire, roared Tsunade, a rain of arrows were released in the sky and with great speed they quickly started descending towards the ground, delivering a critical strike to the disarrayed enemy forces. The smoke had already increased the chaos, and since the enemy was large in numbers their coordination was not up to a mark. But in a great move of leadership, the rakage stepped forward and clasped both his hands forward. Raitun, Jibashi, lightning style, earth flash. An entire arc of lightning sprawled from his hands and destroyed a large portion of the arrows that would have decimated his men. He followed this up by jumping high in the air with one hand holding his sword and the other holding several shuriken which he fired instantly. Shuriken Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique. Hundreds of shuriken came into existence countering the remaining arrows one by one, the few that did manage to get through were being personally blocked by Derui with the help of his sword. His soldiers stared in awe as their leader waged a brave battle. Hurry, Defensive Measures Reorganize the lines, yelled Derui, slash. A sharp arrow struck the rakage straight in the chest, making him fall back on the ground. Quickly taking out the weapon from his chest, coughing blood in the process, the injured rakage leapt back among his troops as several of them had slammed their hands on the ground. Dotan Doryuhiki, Earth Release, Mud Wall Jutsu the resistance forces quickly formed a large wall of their own shielding them from the continuous barrage of arrows. Kakashi shrewdly saw through the enemy's attempt to turn the tide in their favor, the rakage was indeed a good fighter. Quickly turning toward Tsunade, he looked her straight in the eye. Fire explosive arrows quickly, don't let them shore up their defenses. Commanded Kakashi urgently, as the archers readied the special explosive arrows. Fire, yelled Tsunade, boom. Kakashi nodded as the explosive arrows started blowing up the small walls formed by the resistance, but more were being formed in a continuous, valiant effort by the resistance. Gara, when the next barrage hits their walls. Slam through with your full power. Ordered Kakashi quickly, hi. Soon enough the next round of explosive arrows blew away a large number of erected defensive walls. More walls were in the process of being raised when Gara concentrated and pressed both his hands forward. Geo, shouted Kakashi, Sabukaha, sand wall. A tidal wave of raging sand rose from the ground and brutally slammed into the defensive walls of the resistance. 
As a testament to Gara's power, wave after wave of walls crumbled burying with them hundreds of resistant soldiers alive. With a large amount of sand enveloped in all directions of the surrounded resistance forces, Gara clenched his fists. Sabuka Q, Sand Binding Coffin. Derui yelled in horror as he along with a few thousand soldiers got entangled in a large sand coffin. So massive was the attack that nobody got the time to move, they felt their bones crumbling from the sheer crushing pressure. A harshly panting Gara looked towards Kakashi to determine the final fate of the captured enemy leader. The Supreme Reich commander lowered his gaze, even as he raised his hand in the air. After a moment of trepidation, the decisive signal was given. Ah, Kakashi closed his eyes on hearing the soul-terrifying cries as thousands of soldiers were crushed brutally in that giant sand coffin. Among them were the top resistance battle commanders and the Rakich himself. Enemy frontline and rearline units decimated. Resistance casualties crossing 20,000. Rakich Derui died in battle. Reported Tsunade silently, the Senju heir saw Kakashi's sad gaze fixed on the remaining few thousand terrified resistance soldiers that were caught in the middle of the battlefield. Neither could they advance or retreat. Their leaders were dead and there was no one coming to help them since the Reich had already jammed communications within the area to prevent the resistance from calling for reinforcements. Mercy, asked Tsunade hesitantly, I cannot. All archers, eliminate remaining stragglers. Kill them all. Said Kakashi coldly, much to Tsunade's despair. The next few minutes passed in silent horror as one by one the remaining resistance soldiers were slaughtered. Their painful cries resonated across the entire field, but Kakashi remained firm on his decision. Only when the last enemy fighter had been put out of their misery did Kakashi issue the order of ceasefire. Beneath them lay a river of blood, flesh, broken weapons, and the corpses of 25,000 soldiers. One among them was the valiant Rakage who didn't leave his troops till his last moment. Instead of the expectations of cheers over victory an eerie silence prevailed among the Reich army as they silently witnessed the tragedy in front of them. Deep down all of them knew this had been just the first day, and the beginning of a long war. Reorganize our forces. Be ready for an attack, but before that. Said Kakashi sadly, his eyes lingered over the sea of dead bodies lying beneath the walls. The tactician in him marveled at the cruel way in which he had eliminated the enemy, but the human in him could only be mortified for being responsible for all these deaths. Commander Tsunade. Yes, Supreme Commander. Replied Tsunade crisply, notify all forces, every officer and soldier will render respectful salutes to the deceased enemy Kage and his soldiers. Ordered Kakashi, hi. Everyone nodded in consent and followed the order given by their leader by rendering respectful salutes to the martyred enemy soldiers lying motionless on the battlefield. While it was true that each of them had been a foe, in the end they were all still soldiers. Warriors who died for their leaders and their beliefs, it was a courtesy to render respect. Matsuri quickly followed after Kakashi on receiving the signal from the tired man. His shoulders were slumped, and he seemed to have aged an entire decade in the past half an hour. But that was the truth of war. Sasuke calmly watched the battle unfolding in front of him. Well, it was a battle according to Kakashi's standards. But to Sasuke this was just a guerrilla tactic carried out with the intention of capturing the enemy's attention. So far, it has worked brilliantly. It was actually quite smart of Kakashi to send a small force of 200 soldiers to the enemy camp's rear and start wreaking havoc. The Reich managed to achieve this feat by transporting its troops through the Black Lancers' birds, it helped that the Black Lancers were paramilitary troops and had performed well on the battlefield. Still he didn't trust them. Nor did he trust Shino who had accompanied him on this mission. It was the Aburame who had suggested creating confusion among enemy ranks by starting a heavy mist camouflage. Then through careful small-scale infiltration, their tiny force set up explosives around the outer areas of the enemy camp. The resistance simply assumed that the mist was natural since the enemy had already been cleared from the areas they captured, making it a big mistake on its part. When the explosives went off, 
panic spread among the enemy soldiers. Combine that fear with witnessing Sasuke Uchiha leading a full-scale charge on several outer posts along with nearly 100 Reich soldiers sent alarm bells across the entire camp. With Derui and Shikamaru absent, the less experienced junior officers found it quite difficult to regain control. Sasuke actually wondered why Jiraiya had now shown up till now, but then again he was thankful for that. Strong or not, he didn't wish to face Jiraiya along with the entire resistance army with so few men. But it seemed the tide was finally turning in the enemy's favor, they had finally reorganized their formations and were initiating heavy counterattacks. Sasuke, come in. He was relieved when Kakashi's voice rang over the communication device. He had actually started to worry about the fate of the real battle being fought near the wall. Go ahead, Kakashi. Replied Sasuke, mission accomplished. What's your status? asked Kakashi seriously, for a moment, the Uchiha could not believe what he just heard. Those words coming from Kakashi only meant one thing, but still he had to confirm it again for his own personal satisfaction. Repeat your last. Insisted Sasuke, making Kakashi sigh over the line. All enemy hands lost, mission accomplished. Report your status now. Instructed Kakashi sternly, receiving a grunt in return. Our element of surprise is gone. Enemy forces have reorganized formation, they'll be over us anytime soon. Answered Sasuke, then it means Shikamaru has returned back to take charge. Our losses so far, asked Kakashi grimly, 18 dead, 40 wounded with 15 critical and in need of immediate medical attention. We cannot hold on for more than a few minutes at most. Orders, requested Sasuke, secure the wounded, leave the dead and return back to base. Your mission's over. Instructed Kakashi, you want me to leave my martyred soldiers in the field, after they gave their lives for the Reich? I can get them back, just give me a few more minutes. Argued Sasuke passionately, clearly opposed to this dishonorable move. In a few minutes all your men will be dead. Maybe you can live with that, I can't. The dead can wait, the living cannot. Get my soldiers back here, commander. This is an order. Barked Kakashi angrily, certainly not in the mood for Sasuke's chauvinistic tendencies. The Kaiser would have never allowed this insult to our own soldiers. Retorted Sasuke hotly, making the older man sigh. Maybe not. But I am not the Kaiser, I am Kakashi. And on my honor as a commander, I promise to bring our dead back home. I have a plan for that as well, have faith in me Sasuke. Said Kakashi honestly, there was a short silence over the line as Kakashi thought about a few other things that might help in persuading Sasuke to see reason. Very well. Orders acknowledged. Returning to base, Sasuke out replied the Uchiha, will be waiting. The line went dead as Sasuke turned towards Suajestu and Shino who had also heard the entire conversation. The three of them exchanged nods, as Sasuke turned towards his defending soldiers. All right, soldiers. We are falling back, platoons 1, 2, 3, 4 will be going with Shino and Suajetsu. Platoon 5 will be with me since most of them are still in the condition to fight, which is not the case with the other platoons. Any questions? asked Sasuke, no, sir, replied all of them in unison, quite relieved to finally go back. Suijetsu, the wounded are your responsibility. We'll cover you and then fall back to extraction site 2 and evacuate from there. Shino get them back to the walls. Commanded Sasuke, TCH, and here I thought the fun was just getting started. Said Suijetsu sarcastically, will follow orders. Watch yourself. Replied Shino curtly, hmm. Sasuke watched as his comrades left with the injured soldiers. Looking around he saw seventeen soldiers were standing beside him now waiting for him to get their asses out of here as soon as possible. Set off the traps and explosives we set for retreating. We'll be taking Route B, move fast since the enemy will be right behind our asses. And after they find out that we just slaughtered 25,000 of them they'll skin you alive. So run. 
said Sasuke urgently, fuck yeah. Man, let's get the hell out of here. This shit was crazy to start with. Sasuke didn't pay any heed to the men's chatter, they would occasionally stop and retaliate a little over the enemy troops still in pursuit and then start running again. The cycle continued for a few minutes until they reached the extraction site or their birds would be waiting for them. And it was this expectation that made all of them panic when they arrived at the extraction site, only to find their evacuation bird dead. Murdered. Sasuke barely sensed the slight shift in wind and jumped in the air at the last second thereby evading a shuriken that would have taken his head out. On regaining his bearings, he heard several harsh sounds. Looking around, he was shocked to find each and every one of his soldiers lying dead on the ground. Each of them with a shuriken embedded in their skulls, a horrified expression etched in their eyes for eternity, as their blood created a river staining the lush green grass. They didn't even realize what hit them. His sharp ears picked up the sound of incoming enemy forces, making him reconsider his options. His men were dead, the evacuation bird gone rendering him stranded. Unless he found a way to link up with Shino and others in time, he would be left stranded in the midst of thousands of pissed-off resistance soldiers who hated his guts. But the immediate priority was finding the person who just killed his men. His question was answered when a familiar voice spoke from behind. It's been a while, little brother. And that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and until next time. Later.